I mean, there's, uh, there's quite a few wooden snare at him. Chap with a bit of brass in his pocket and uh, putty in your hands, I shouldn't wonder. I tar very much for those heartwarming few words. Yeah, but mind you, I and no disrespect, but, uh, well, I don't really think a church wedding's very suitable. I beg your pardon? I always feel that when it comes to folk of uh, mature years, like, a uh, civil ceremony looks better. You see, as I see it, there's church couples and there's registry office couples, which is where I place you and his nibs. Well, not that there's any shame in it. I'm very glad to hear that. No, I mean, you are living together under the same roof, which isn't what you might call proper, but, uh, well, there's many a couple get married out of convenience, like, that wouldn't have your nerve. They'd be keeping it all very quiet. Hilda, you are getting on my wick, so if you finish that witch's brew that you call tea... Hey, 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 less of the orders. You're not in charge now, you know. <laughs> no, but be honest. I mean, the church and all that. It's just for starters in your book, isn't it? I reckon you're going to have a big flash reception. And that's where you and Mr. Showbiz will come into your own. Hold me back before I go in there and throttle her with a damp toilet roll. When I did English at O level, I had to do an essay on the stream of consciousness. I never knew where it meant till I met Hilda. Oh, well, I wouldn't know about that, love. But what I do know is this. What she says in her own daft way can tell you a lot about what folk round here think. Well, this is all very embarrassing. But it does seem there's a shortfall on expectations. Well, a six-year-old quid gone missing. I have a good idea where and all. Oh, it was such a success. There was such heartening community spirit. I can't really believe anyone from the street would sink so low. Happen, but the brass doesn't tally. It can't be left like this. Oh, I agree. We mustn't just drop the matter. If funds have been misappropriated, then of course it's serious. There are, I mean, apart from the duck with this, you, some minor discrepancies between what you calculated the stalls might take and what they actually did take. Not to the extent of 60 odd quid. Well, let me take one example. See, the Tom Bowler stall. You're nearly ten pounds out. Oh, I I know who were helping out there, eh? Sam Tyndall. You're surely not saying Mr. Tyndall isn't trustworthy. Have you ever played balls with him? My sums were right, they were smack on. You're talking to a man that's weighed field rations, you know. Morning, love. Sorry I missed your breakfast. But... Hey, you look superb. I couldn't wish for anything more on the day. Alec, um, I've been sort of going over the arrangements. You know, my mind. Look, don't worry about it. It's going to be glitz all the way. That's not just the leading lady, that's the supporting cast as well. We've got our lovely Gloria, chief bridesmaid, that fine upstanding ex-mayor, Alf Roberts, giving you away, and my latest coup, Mr. Success himself, Prince of the Turf, my old friend Chaz Halliday, hop foot from his sylvan retreat to be best man. Oh, um, the bookmaker. I thought you were going to say Arkle. Do I detect a slight edge? Well, I am a bit worried. Take that reception, for instance. There's no problem. Look, what I suggest is a slap-up champagne do at the Weatherfield Grand. The green veil sweet for preference. Don't you think that's a bit predictable? Predictable? If you'd said expensive... What folk expect from us? Showing off, going over the top. Yeah. What I really want, you see, is a, a proper wedding. The sort most girls have when they're 18. Not summit that looks like an excuse for a good rave up. Bet. You are amazing. You never cease to surprise me. Yeah, well, I surprise myself sometimes. Take that reception, for instance. What's wrong with us having it back here at the ranch? Well, why not? I mean, to coin a phrase, why keep a pub and bark yourself? That's right. And if everything's going to be kosher, one of us will have to move out. Yeah, hey, we've already discussed this. I am sorry, Alec, but it looks wrong. And folk pick on these sort of details. They make a meal of them. Look, you know I'm stretched to my limits cash-wise. I mean, if I did camp for the night, it's a hotel bill on top of everything else. Oh, come off it. I've already saved your fortune on reception. Ah, ah, yeah. But strictly speaking, I am not supposed to vacate these premises. Well, that is just baloney. Who's going to know? I'm serious, Alec. I want it to be right. Traditional. Proper. I'll see you later in the bar when you're giving the matter some thought. Well, if there's any mud flying there, they'd better not sling it my way, I can tell you that. Every penny I took went in that bun. For it's sugged and it's stirring pot. You know, if his nose gets any longer, he'll fall flat on his face. <laughs> and it's all based on his figures. I know. Oh, that'll be hard to come tracking us down. Oh, I've had not called for 
an inconvenient time. Well, come in. It'll not be about as bonuses, I don't suppose. Well, uh, if you've got company... And... Look, don't be shy. I can guess what you've come about. And if I'm right, Ivy's got a bone to pick with, you know? Yes. Well, in that case, I'll come straight to the point. It's fairly common knowledge, I should imagine, that there was shortfall in the funds taken. Oh, come on, get to the nitty-gritty. Well, to be blunt, it seems around 60-odd pounds has gone missing. And of that discrepancy, almost half... But would you to do us, right? Go on, say it. I'll not shut clock at you. Well, I would. Blooming at your turn out for charity. You must appreciate that I have a responsibility to the fund, to the beneficiary. I happen. But if I were you, I'd go easy. Because it sounds to me like that they're accusing somebody of thieving. Yes, and I'll tell you something else. If any thieving's been done, I reckon it were done after the takings rounded over. If you're trying to imply that I might... No, it's you that's implying, love. Look, we took 95 quid there in the coppers. We emptied it all out. Less expenses. Expensive? Well, yes, our Jack had to pay for that flaming castle, didn't they? They don't grow on trees. Look, it, it cost 30 quid. Well, if you can prove that that's the case, of course I apologise. Well, you'll have your proof, love. You'll have a certified receipt before the day's out. Had a good morning, dear. Uh, so-so. Any fresh thoughts? Well, I'm afraid I have to tell you we've not got Westminster Abbey at fully booked. Touché. No, seriously, I do understand your feelings, but it's just they're very hard to keep track of. But if you've decided you want things done proper, I'll do what I can. I've had an idea. No, no, let me finish. I mean, as far as the stagmite's concerned, if you think it's more traditional for me to move out, then I'll do it. I wouldn't dream of it. Eh? There's a risk. You could get your knuckles wrapped. So, my mind's made up. Where have I heard that before? I shall move out. In fact, I've already got a room booked at the Woodlands Hotel, no less. The Woodlands? That's a bit drastic, isn't it? Don't fret. You won't be footing the bill. I realise how stretched you are. I shall pay every penny it costs. Oh, oh, I see. First I'm a show-off, now I'm a penny pincher. Would I wed a penny pincher? That all sounded a bit acid, didn't it? Yeah, that's the impression I got. Not that we were here with you, I want the lowdown. No, we just give you Chinese burns till we get it. The wedding arrangements. That's giving Alec a rough time. Changes the mind by the minute. Latest thing is she wants it all by the book. I see. She's making sure she's in the <laughs> driving seat from the word go, is she? Uh, isn't that what all marriage comes down to? You know something, sister, you've got a point here. <laughs> stamped on her, have you? Sean Rue's boss. Not with you, Jack. This woodland's all tell idea. But it's no secret, you know. So I'm beginning to gather. I'm not sure where we're heading, though. Oh, man to man like, John. Makes you look a bit of a Charlie. Oh, what's well, so okay? It's posh at the Woodlands Hotel. They started having these single nights right all oh, desired, Lord. <coughs> When's the wedding? Wednesday. They have on Tuesdays. Still, that's always been a rave. She'll go down fighting. <laughs> Cashed up, has she? Uh, no, I don't think she has, actually. Oh. In the bath, I shouldn't wonder. Like a flaming mermaid, she spends hours in that bath. Oh, well, as long as it's only hot water and not Asta's milk. Or Best Bitter, or Dom Perignon, or whatever it is. Listen, if she wants to bathe in champagne, fair enough. I am not mean, in spite of all the rumours. Oh, dear, I'll tell you what, I'll be up there with a bucket before she took the plug out. <laughs> well... Do with a long soaking hot tub myself, so I'll uh, uh, see you tonight. Glow, uh, before you dash off, love. Yeah? Uh, don't, don't let this get back, but uh, Bet's a bit hurt. Hurt? In what way? Well, it's difficult to explain. How can I put it? She don't feel it's right that the bride and bridegroom should spend their last night of... Um... Freedom? What a lovely word. Uh, no, their last night of single people, under the same roof. So, she's booked into the Woodlands Hotel? That's right, but I mean, only as a last resort. Uh, she was hoping, you see, that you'd invite her to stay at your flat. you joking? Oh, flipping heck, why didn't she mention it then? Well, I mean, she's got her pride, and she could hardly invite herself, could she? She knows she'd be welcome, especially with me being bridesmaid. <laughs> there you are, you see. I mean, I told her you'd be only too willing. I'll, I'll wait till she gets out of the bath and give her the good news. 
That's okay. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be. Oh, you're one of the best, Lou. You really are. Ooh, get gone before I embrace you. Oh, try. Hello? Oh, Jean. How nice. Oh, that's right. It, it's all arranged. Uh, there's a presentation at about seven, and of course the Gazette will be there. Yes. Yes, it was a good photo in the early edition. Yes. Yes, people can be very kind. Uh, well, roughly 500 pounds. Yes. Yes, well, I, I look forward to seeing you later then. Bye. Got back from work. Yeah, I know. I spotted you coming across. Only your phone's been ringing. Yes, it was Mrs. Meredith. Ah, oh, could you put the kettle on, love? Of course, no problem. I wish you'd stop saying that, Miss Laid Back. Suddenly everything's no problem. I wish that were so. Do sit down. Oh, I certainly must. It's been a very tiring day so far, and it's not half finished yet. Listen, we've got some news. So? Oh? Well, at least Tracy has. She's come up with a theory. Oh. He'd say, what have you taken? They'd say 456. He put it down as five pounds. That's ten percent extra. You work it out. 435 with ten percent added. It's near enough five hundred pounds. In other words, Percy were rounding the figures up all afternoon. Are you sure of that, love? I saw him. I told him. But he's such a big head. He called me a little Miss Noah. <laughs> Which is like the kettle call in the pot black. <laughs> Set the cups out, will you, love? Yeah. Well, does that help solve the mystery, or does the plot thicken? Well, I know the Duckworths took 30. You're kidding. In four expenses, they claim. You believe them? I'm inclined to. As for the rest, I'd say Tracy's right. Obviously, Percy overestimated. Trouble is, Jean Meredith's seen the photo in the Gazette and expects to be handed a cheque for £500. Oh, it's Majesty's own then, is there? Brewed up, have you? In the pot. Well? Well, what? Well, did you get that flaming receipt you were on about? Sort of. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Look, I didn't hide the blessed thing from a perm like you like you would a lawnmower or something. Since when have you ever had a lawnmower? Look, I, I had a lend of it from a mate, Billy Scubbins. You remember him? He's got the second hand place down, down Canal Street. Well, what, that idea? The retina can't even write his own name. Now, well, you believe me, he's as sharp as a tack, darling. Now, he said I could have the castle for now, being it with for a charity. But I had to hire the flaming pump to blow it up with. So where did you get that, then? Off oh, Billy. See with that. Then the trucker brought it on. The old swindler took 30 quid off me. So where's the receipt, then? On the bar. Oh. Well, you see, it's going to be going all round the houses. Oh, don't tell me this is it. It's in your handwriting. There's no signature. It just says BS. Printed BS. And an X. Oh, well, well, that's his mark, you see. But it's like you said. Can't write. Hi, you look proper comfy. I'll just pop upstairs. I've raided the shops again. I've got some fabulous finery, which is not for your eyes as yet. So no peeping, do you promise? Cross me out. Just let me know the damage I'll write you the cheque. The man's only a bounder. Hey, where you belong? Well, I shan't be eating, love. I had so much to eat in town. Yeah, well, I've got to go out too. So if I could just have a minute of your crowded schedule. But of course, my sweet. It's, uh, it's Gloria. She's expecting your child. <coughs> oh, seriously. I was having a word with the girl earlier on. She's uh, a bit upset. I knew there'd be jealousy. You're such a heartthrob. No, come on, joking apart. It's this Woodlands Hotel thing. She feels slighted. You mean she wants us to pair up? Me and her on the razzle? Fine! Nothing of the kind. She was shocked at that idea. Uh, not in the moral sense, of course, but uh, it's just that she considers that you're her best pal and she was looking forward to putting you up at her place. Look, Alec, if that's how Glow really feels, well, I'm flattered. In touch. 
Maybe she's right. It would be more, what's the word? Fitting. You've got it. Uh, uh, shall I cancel the booking, then, uh, at the Woodlands? Why not? Yeah, if there's any charge, I'll take care of it. You are a love. Are you telling me I stand here, a man with my record, a man with the Western Desert behind him, convicted, maligned on the word of a mere child? I'm sorry, Mr. Sugden, but there's no doubt Tracy's sums were right. They tallied with the takings, you see. How about the doors, then? Are they going to be let off? It's to be no check where that brass went. Well, they promised to provide a receipt. Excuse me. Nobody wants a scandal, nobody wants a witch hunt, least of all me. But oh. if there's been a wrongdoing... Well, you're coming right on you. You are. Oh well, oh, well, it's a theatrical term. It means at the appropriate moment. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll second that. If my lad was here to stir it. Don't you worry. I could do, but I've held me fire so far. You can pull the trigger whenever you like. I'm bulletproof, oh, mate. Please, uh, you mentioned the possibility of a receipt. Yeah, that's right. And here it is. Oh. Now let's see Her Majesty's busybody produce this evidence. Looks like a betting slip to me. Uh, it doesn't seem to have a signature. Of course it has. B.S.X. Billy Stubbins. What? That half with? He can't write his own name. He has to make a mark. Uh, would you know his... Uh, Mark? Well, I've seen it. You could vouch for this, then? I need to... Uh, I could. I need to have some credence. Look, it's there! BSX! In black and white! I mean, who could forge that for Pete's sake? I've no time to stand here, nattering. Yeah, go on! Run off! Do a bunk! I know we can stick your apology! Uh, well, Mr. Duckworth, I, I hope you'll accept my apology. All discrepancies, it seems, are now accounted for. <laughs> oh, I'll get it. Oh, oh thank you. you. Fair enough. But next time there's any fundraising to be done, don't come to us, because we've had a sickness. Oh, uh, anyway, it's, it's Mrs. Meredith to see you. Oh, oh Jean, do come in. Uh, have you uh, met Mrs. Duckworth? Oh, yeah, I think I saw you at the fate. Uh -huh. yes, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Duckworth were very much to the forefront. The inflatable castle was their idea. Is that so? Well, I really can't thank you enough, then. I mean, that title, Friends of Weatherfield. I think it's proved to have real meaning, don't you, Mrs. Duckworth? Yeah, I do, absolutely. There we were, all pulling together. Just like in Blitz. It's going to be a hot time in the old town tonight. Hey, by the by, grateful thanks for the invite, which I hereby accept. You want to? I thought Ali was pulling my leg. Hang on a minute, you were supposed to be grown artists. No, no, you were supposed to be grown artists. You know, Summer Cock, I get the distinct feeling we've been having our strings pulled. Yeah, you can't blame him. This hotel idea had him panic stricken. Exactly. The plan's working well. Anyway, he's come to ill. So, if you've got a spare bed, you're lumbered with my girly confession. <laughs> you, uh, got all your clubs sorted out anyway? I'm not with you. Not for this business trip. I mean, you're gonna need the new suit, aren't you? Not to mention a bowler hat and a briefcase. <laughs> I'm not joining a board of directors, you know. I'm not even a captain of industry yet. I'm just doing business studies. Anyway, it's all casual gear instead of you. You must be joking. A little bit of in a pinstripe bum freezers, biros behind the ears, pocket calculators all over the shop. Pocket calculators? Can't they the wrong pocket? Hey, not to mention that haircut you'll be bad on the first day. <laughs> All the kids are back at school now, studying, getting prospects. And where's my daughter? Well, she's not just a schoolgirl, Alan. She's practically a young woman. She can look after herself, your Jenny. She's got a lot to learn, Rita, and she's not going to learn it's one in round bloody France, is she? Oh, well, they're picking grapes. I'm not waiting for her to pick grapes. The minute I get any clue to her whereabouts, I'm across that channel, I tell you. I lie to leave it all behind and go do we have to have this Yankee rubbish? You're done into any nice songs. Hey, yo, speak your flavour now, now. Yeah, go on, sling your up. This is an old girl's wife. Rob, yes, and if there's any photos, then keep your ugly mug off of you. Do not but cause trouble. Man, I have fed up and I can finish with you, you're disgusting. Yeah, and apart from the canal back, not touching your room at the spot. This is Jack Joe with the old dub. No, old dub, it's done now. It's you, you can't count. Once you get past ten, you're groping. Yes, ten, two, these limits. You know, there'd been three world wars. He wouldn't have known where it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Could I have your attention? And if you haven't fetched it with you, a bit of us should be in order. I'd like to introduce George Pickled. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Pickles. <laughs> oh, I don't know, though. Uh, he is the chairman of the Friends of the Weatherfield Hospital. Over to you, George. Nothing barred except animal impressions. <laughs> Moo! No, no, seriously, folks, and keeping it short, I'd just like to thank everyone for the wonderful effort yesterday. And it's now my pleasure to present a cheque totalling £500. Oh, Mrs. Meredith. Yeah. Mrs. Meredith, we give you this with every wish <clears throat> your little boy will soon be restored to full sight and health. Oh. 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 Well, uh, God bless you. God bless you all. And particularly Mrs. Bishop, who made it all possible. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh. 500 after all, then. Yeah. There was a, a late anonymous donation. Yeah, I bet I can guess who that was. Uh, well, Emily sworn me to secrecy, but, yeah, she did dip into her own pocket. I don't think it'll be much of a mystery for them who know the full story. Doors all locked. We'll tackle the debris in the morning, if that's okay with you, boss. Aye, fine, fine. Hey, don't, don't dash off up to bed. I've only got the takers to sort. We can sit and have a natter. <laughs> well, there is some at online attention. Shall I, uh, shall I get you a drink? Yeah, okay, just this thing. Uh, Gloria tells me you've, uh, sorted out this hen night business. That's right. Oh. Wonderful thing, isn't it? Genuine friendship. Just needs a little help at times, doesn't it? I beg your pardon. Never mind. Uh, look, if you if you mean I dropped a few hints. Skip it. No, it's just that I wanted things to run smoothly, you know, without itches. You don't understand that. I'm very grateful, Alec. You see, it'll give me time to ponder, talk things over, see it all from a fresh viewpoint. She's a practical kid, is Gloria, with her head screwed on. Not one of your fans, mind you, Alec. But very fair-minded. Now, I think it's very generous of you agreeing to this. Because, you see, if anybody could talk me out of our prospective union, Glow could. Oh. <laughs> well, 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 it's a good job. It's only for one night, then, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Actually, it's a bit longer than that. I'm leaving with her now till the wedding day. My bags are in the hall. The taxi's due any minute. Right, sir. Oh, there it is. Best get more bags. Uh, Drive now, Carl. Right. Uh, No, 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 Gl no, Gloria, don't disturb her if she's still asleep. I, will, I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> uh, no, 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 it's, it's nothing. I, I was just wondering how she was, that's all. But, but you won't know if she's still asleep. It is rather late to be asleep, though, isn't it? Uh, late night, was it? <laughs> it was. Oh. What, uh, what exactly did you get up to? Well, there's no need to take that attitude. I'm only making a genial inquiry. <laughs> I'll see you both at ten sharp. Flaming chink. Oh, it's a bad sign, is that, Mr Gilroy? Not trusting your fiancée the day before you wed her. Don't you start, neither. And I do trust her, implicitly. Hmm, sounded like checking up to me. Yeah, well, it wasn't. Well, all right, but even if it was, I wouldn't blame you. You wouldn't? No. Phew. You'd be right daft if you trusted Bat Lynch any further than you could see her. <laughs> eh? Thanks for your support, Hilda. Thank you very much. Well, there, Alec, then. Yeah, dead keen, isn't it? It's rare I get anything but wrong numbers this time of the morning. Breaking them. Yeah, fishing for info. Trying to find out what we were up to last night. You never told him, did you? Uh, I reckon he's got a mighty suspicion we were out clubbing it till all hours. Good. Because I should hate him to know we were just sat here gassing like a couple of old biddies. Come on, you. We had a very good natter last night, and well, you know it. Yeah. Where did it get us, eh? At least you know how I feel about you and him now. Oh, yeah, we're friends like you, eh? I mean, what is the point of making somebody feel lousy about something you know they're going to do anyway? Oh, I don't want to make you feel lousy. The point is, he manipulated you into staying here so you wouldn't go berserk in a hotel, didn't he? Well, he's not getting everything his own way. Along with my hospitality, you get my opinion. I'm worried about you, Bet. 
You seem so flat about marrying him, unhappy even. And I am not unhappy. I'm resolved. See? You sound as though you're off to Weatherfield General to get a fist lanced. Where's the love? Where's the passion? Where's the romance? You'll not last five minutes without them. Come on, Glow. That's what all my affairs with fellas have been about. Romance, passion. What a succession of flops. Alec cares about me. He loves me in his own way. Sure, he's not just trying to buy you? No. But with his generosity, he's proved what he thinks about me, hasn't he? He wants me. That's very important. But marriage, though, Bet, it's a very big thing. So's not being married at my age. It's an even bigger thing. Alex made all sorts of things seem possible. A future. A good one and all. For me. Okay. Let it rest now, eh? I said my piece last night. I wish you well, whatever you do. I know you do, kid. <laughs> and if I can wish you well in this, I must. Shut your face and eat your cornflakes. Oh, hello. Oh, Mrs. O, I feel really rotten about asking you, but do you mind if I whack all this lot in your washing machine? Oh, do I, yeah? Only I'm in a bit of a dash. Do you know there's a double queue down at that laundrette? I'm not forking out for a service wash, you know, because that new woman, she just loses everything. Yeah, you just go out, love. What are you sewing? Oh, I'm just fixing this up for Alec and Bat's wedding. Wedding as an excuse to treat yourself. Ooh, not this one, no. No, I might have got something new, but something tells me it's not going to last all that long. And a wedding's only worth spending on to the extent you think it's going to last. So, you should have had new for hours. Oh, well, I'd only just got this new, then. Is there's that badge, you reckon? Ooh, yeah. Playing cat and mouse with each other already. Cat and mouse, have they? Oh, I knew there was some hotels. Uncle Tom's been in the shop this morning. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, he has. He was trying to get Al to take loads of oranges off his hands. Anyway, he's told me to tell you that he's coming round to see you this afternoon. Are you thrilled? Well, I was wondering what I might have said. It has been a fortnight. Yeah, well, he's had a lot on. That couple that helped him out, I think they've been away, so... He can make his own excuses when he gets here. You're not going to give him a hard time, are you? Cool. Why should I care one way or the other? <laughs> now he's playing cat and mouse, eh? Hey? <laughs> You're thrilled to bits, really, aren't you? <laughs> Blooming heck, you're going at that like a ravenous lion, Vera. Well, what other pleasure is there for me and my family? Well, you want to watch it at your family, like. otherwise you'll be eating it today, you'll be wearing it tomorrow. So what, I'll eat till I blow up, till I'm just an explosion. <laughs> you're going bonkers, you are, there, you know. Well, what? The same blinking thing, day in, day out. Same flaming ground. Then you should talk now, because I've had enough of you. Just to treat that swine in fags and ale. Vera? No. Who cares about me? Not even you. You don't know what it's like, Ivy. You what? At least you had a loving husband. All right, he might be dead now, but you've still got nice memories. And a son. All right, he might be as big a washout as mine, but he's still around to talk to and help. And he'd help you if he asked him. What have I got, eh? It's horrible being me. Just horrible. I'd rather be scraggly Clilda Ogden. At least he's so fit to feel of. All right. I've had enough now. I'm taking you for a night out. What do you want to go out with me for, eh? I don't want to ruin it. Because that's all you need, Vera. You just need to get out of the house and let your hair down, blow cobwebs a bit. What do you mean? Get dressed up, like. Go bopping. Oh, yeah, Pig Les. No, no, no. Bingo were more what I had in mind, Vera. Oh, no, I forget that. No, that's boring. No, we'll get all togged up and get ourselves two toy boys, eh? Yeah, get in top gear. Will we? I'll tell you what, we'll get a cab so I can get smashed and we don't have to worry. Oh, you know, it's going to be a night to remember this. A real wizard Do <laughs> you know I feel better already? Oh. I do. That somebody mm. does. Betty, Rita, always Lovely. nice to see you two. Well, pals have to rally round, don't they, in a crisis? Hey, now. <laughs> Look, we'll have a, a vodka and tonic, and uh, oh, go on, I'll have a dry sherry. Oh, and I was wondering, love, it, do you need any help with anything? No, I don't think so, love. Alex seems to have everything under control. <laughs> yeah, it will have. Well, he'll have his work cut out trying to control her, won't he? He <laughs> will, that. Uh, it's one pound seventy-two, please. There we are, Chuck. There you go. Right. Here's to both of them. They're the best man win. 
Oh, you are lucky, Mr. Gilroy. Am I? Yeah, getting wed in the church. I wish I had a been. Yeah, well, if you was yeah. Kinsatchalong on a bit, you would have been. Yeah, 20 years at your rate of saving. I'd better go and get me washing out. I'll see you later, Captain. I envy you and all. This time two years ago, I'd thought to walk in Phyllis Pierce down the aisle. One born every minute, isn't there? <laughs> hey? You changed my darling. <laughs> Gloria, mm? you don't know what's up with that, do you? Well, she's found to be a bit thoughtful, isn't she? I mean, it's a big step at her age, marriage. Do you? Oh, but I mean, thoughtful about what? She looks downright miserable. Well, she'll be going from one extreme to the other, won't she? This will be the apprehensive bit now. And is she, do you think? Apprehensive? <laughs> well, no, not really. I mean, I've done everything a friend could possibly do to talk her out of marrying you. You what? Oh, yeah. And I'd say she's still 75% sure of being there. 75%? What good's that? Flaming wedding's tomorrow. Oh, it is good of you to let me use it, Mrs. O. Well, you bought it for me. I hope you don't feel obliged. No, do I, Eck? You'd come round washer or no washer, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course I would. Do you know, I count on you as one of my best mates. Oh. I never thought I'd get on with anybody. Old? <laughs> Grown up, you know. Well, I'm not surprised after your dad. <laughs> oh, wait up now, this'll be your Uncle Tom. You always got on with him, didn't you? Yeah, but I reckon I'm gonna clear up and shoot out the back way. Oh, now don't run away. I'm not running away, I've gotta be back by half past. We don't want Alf having another one of his turns, do we? I'll see you later. All right. Have a nice time. Oh. <laughs> oh. Come on in then. Ta. Stranger. Hey, I'm ever so sorry I haven't been in touch with you before now, Hilda. But uh, it, it, it's nice to see you. Yes, well, it's uh, very nice to see you and all. Uh, sit yourself down. Oh, Ta. <laughs> ah. You're, um... Yeah, helpers have been away on the holidays, Sally said. Aye, that, and, and a few other things besides. But I wanted you to know, I'm thinking of retiring, Hilda. Oh? Yes, I've, uh, funk anyway, I've put shop up for sale. Oh, well, good for you. Well, I've got a bit put by, and uh, you can't go on forever with these early mornings, can you? Oh, not if you don't have to, no. Well, this is it, you see, and I've always promised myself a nice retirement. Oh, you've got plans, have you? Oh, aye. Yeah. We had plans, me and Stan. Big plans. Only we never got the chance. What with him being took away from me so soon, like. Aye, it was a terrible thing, Hilda. Terrible. Any road, I'm glad you think I'm doing right. Oh, I do. Mm -hmm. Good. Right. Well, all I've got to do now is to get a nice little home together for myself and... and, and then... And then I'll be well away, won't I? I've told you, Alec, you've no need to worry. It's all very well saying I don't need to worry, but anyway, I'm not worrying. I just want to have a chat, both of us. I mean, it's both of us involved, isn't it? A person can't get married on their own, and yet I feel it's all my doing. I'm stealing you from your friends. Well, they do a bit. And is that what you think? Don't be so daft, Alec. Well, you haven't been a bit down, love. I mean, is it because I... Put my foot down about that hotel business. Is it techers like? I'm not bothered about that. You did me a favour sending me back to Gloria's. Yeah, I didn't do myself any, did I? She's turned you against me. No, she is not against you. She just doesn't like you very much. Oh. No. She was trying to get out of me what our marriage will be based on like. I mean, she's puzzled. And her asking me, well, it made me realise what a very big step it is we'll be taking. That's why I'm like this. But tomorrow's supposed to be the happiest day of your life. I'm hoping it will be. But it won't if I go into it without really thinking about what I'm doing. Now, will it? Look, look, all I know is that the best thing about you and me is, is the way we laugh at everything, turn everything into a joke. I'm not turning my wedding into a joke. Well, no, but I mean, you, you could be a bit more light-hearted. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to make things wonderful for you. And for you? Well, yes, and me, but... Look, I want you to walk down that aisle and hear angels sing for you. Well, I will. But only if I'm sure. But, but what if you're not sure? I am sure, I think. 
You, you, you can't just think you're sure. I mean, you're either sure or you're not sure, and, and you're not. I am, I think. Where are you going now? Back to Glorious for a natter and an early night. Well, aren't you going to have a hen party? No. I'm going to do a bit more thinking. You know, a quick nightcap, bit of beauty sleep. See you tomorrow. Flipping hope so. Oh, come on, kid. Oh, aren't you going to get yourself done up a bit more fetching than that? Oh, and aren't you going to take a flannel to your face? What did your Jack say when he saw you like that? Never saw my kid, just wolfed his tea down and fell asleep. Oh, but come on, haven't you got a louder dress than that? Just to set me off a bit? <laughs> Look, I feel comfortable and respectable now. Leave me alone, dear. But who wants to feel respectable tonight? I do. Well, I don't. Oh, I want this to be a night to remember. To remember, yes, Vera, to regret. No. Oh, give over. You can't say you've properly enjoyed yourself unless you regret it. Oh, come on, put something a bit louder than that on, kid, just for me. Oh, yeah. flipping neck, all right, Vera. <laughs> hey, what pink flamingo in full of middle-aged shopkeepers, you know? No, it's a right racy place. Hey, and if we don't get lucky down there, we can always come down market a bit. <laughs> what, more down market than pink flamingo? Where will that be, then? Council Dog Club. Hey, little bit cab, kid. Get your skates on, Ivy. Well, it's you that's slowing me up. <laughs> hey, you better come in for a bit, kid. Sinner's isn't ready yet. Ah, uh, no sweat. Next fair's not till nine. Uh, off on town, then? Yeah, we're gonna paint town red, aren't we, Ivy? Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it. Ah, it certainly does. Pink flamingo, that's where we're going first. Oh, my word. Well, you are asking for trouble, then. Eh? Hey? I heard it's a changed. Mostly legless and speechless that I pick up there. Have to be carried out, some of them. Sounds fabulous, doesn't it? Don't you want to be the best man? Well, I'll do it like I should like to, uh, uh, to let him make down at the last moment, wouldn't I? Very kind of you, I'm sure. I know, it's just that I think you should get somebody a bit more enthusiastic, that's all. Well, aren't you pleased for me? <laughs> yes, it's just that, well, it's marriage, isn't it? I mean, getting wet hasn't exactly announced things for me, has it, John? I mean, in fact, it has ruined my life. She is a very demanding woman, is Di. Yeah, but I'm not marrying Di, am I? I know. I wish you were. It's just I'll feel very hypocritical, won't I? When I hand you that ring, I feel like I'm going to put a noose around your neck. Hey, no, I'm, I'm not late, am I? I'm not missing any of the talks, in the way. Who's that, Brad? Huh? Oh, you booked the comedian. Got it. Oh, God. <laughs> this is Jack. He's Salaman and part-time barman. What the hell have you come dressed as a gigolo for? Just now, I'm going to have a great night tonight, mate. Got to be here for duration. I think I'll start with a couple of beers, prime the gut for a bit of the arse for place around. Hey. Just remember, it's you and me running this place tonight. Exactly. The pressure's off. We could get legless without any fools of women breathing down his neck. All right, I'll drink to that. God, honestly, you wouldn't realise that. The games I've had to play to get shut of our beer tonight. I'll be too as well. You're the same, are you? I mean, I had to leave a false trail of addresses and telephone numbers. Otherwise, she would have been here. I'm telling you, she would have been here. Stag night or oh, no stag night. But mine would have been sat at home waiting to batter me for coming home legless. Oh, that's shocking, creature. Oh, it's been shocking. Well, no reflection on your intended, Ali. Start serving my wonderful guests with your jacket. Aye, aye. What is up with him? I mean, it's okay, he's getting wet tomorrow, but that is no reason to let it spoil his stag night. That's everything then? Okay. Yeah. Just beginning to think. Been a bit daft. People might really have wanted to wish me well, man. Oh, they all do, I'm sure. Yeah. Should have had a bit of a do, though. Made it possible for us all to clear the air. Yeah, but you don't want to be walking down the aisle with queasy guts and a throbbing hangover like a lot do. You want a quiet night, you have one. Short day tomorrow, isn't it? Alex right. It's not really me, all this brooding. Anyway. Thanks for being great, kid. I'm off to bed. Good night, then. God, I hope I'll be able to sleep. Probably Ali, wondering if it's all still on. Oh, oh it's it's Betty! There. Betty? Yes. I brought you a little drink and a box of chocolates, my love. Oh, Betty, I'm I glad to see you. Oh, oh, she was just saying she wished she'd had a little do. Oh, you're oh, darling. Oh, 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 look, look at his reason. Yeah. He's a good surprise. Well, we're going to have a little do. Well, 
we couldn't let you go without a bit of a send off, could we? Oh. Now, come on, where's the corkscrew? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, why don't you pretend oh, for this? Yes, yeah. yeah. why not? Hey. <laughs> If you don't want to dance, what are you doing here? I'm just here keeping her company. She don't need no company, eh? So, you're keeping me company now. Oh, aren't I lucky? Yeah, much more deserving cause I am. Lonely, misunderstood. Blasted. Ah, yes, but all for the lack of somebody to be nice to. Oh. Hi. Oh. Are you ignoring me? Or what? No, I'm not there. I'm just trying to deal with this gentleman. Oh, great. <laughs> Come on, go. Hey, this is a nice spot coming in, isn't it? So what? So you'll nix him off me. Have I? Because like you were dancing with them too. I know, but they can't keep up. Yes, well, I'll tell you what, you can have it, and I won't accept him as a free gift. Look, don't fight over me, girls. We'll go on as a threesome, eh? Onto a club. <laughs> oh, just as soon as I get back. Oh, my. Beer is going to be sick. It's disgusting. I'm off. Oh, no! No, I no, don't I like it here. I don't like the place or the clientele. Oh. Anyway, shouldn't you be coming with me? It's quarter to eleven already. Yeah, but I'm going to be stride, yeah. Well, I don't want to be around when that happens. I'll tell you what, you're nearly crawling now. I'm oh. going to phone a cat. Oh, I... Oh, George. So, your pal's deserted, yes, she love? Yeah, brings me out to cheer me up and then dumps me. Never mind. She was only cramping your style. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a gin tea, love, and make it a large one, eh? All right, then. Yeah. You can have this one on me. Uh -huh. Can I? All right, stick around a bit, eh? I'll knock off in an hour. Somewhere nice I can show you. Yo. So you're after a giggle, aren't you? Oh yeah. Yeah, I am. <laughs> hey, girls, girls, Rita, I want to talk. Hey, come on, listen. Come along. So, here's Tibet. Oh, oh yeah. Tibet. Yeah. <laughs> Tibet <laughs> and Alec. Yeah. Not forgetting Alec. No, that's right. Right. Well, to better to better Alec, Alec love it. Blimey. Mm. Better than Alec, eh? Good luck, yeah. love. All the best, my love. Good luck. Thanks. I reckon we're going to need it. <laughs> oh, it's you. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Must look as that hanging about for you. <laughs> Where's your pal? Oh, she's got carried away as usual. I just thought she'd find somebody to carry her home. Yeah. Well, I dare say she can look after herself. Coronation Street, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry you had such a bad night. Funny thing is, I only did it for her, really. Ah, favours of that kind are never worth it. I took a fella's wife out once. Oh, he asked me to, so that he could go out with his girlfriend. The girlfriend stood him up, he got jealous, and I ended up with a couple of broken ribs. <laughs> Flipping heck. <laughs> yeah, I, I think she's bored we are married, you know. Everybody is to him talk. I'm surprised it hasn't gone out of fashion. Hasn't it? <laughs> you on your own, are you? Was it that obvious? Oh, no, just a bit. People of our age out in the town, cabby in. Mm, they're either on their own mission that they weren't, or they're glad to be getting out of the way. Slow down now, Jack. 
Just because you're oh, slow, there's no need to get everybody else on the same road. Kimo, he can't slow down now. We've got this team gone. Is that what you call that racket? Oh, Kimo, you miserable ape. I, I, I'd be less miserable if you weren't pouring next quarter's profits down their throats. If they were paying for their own, they'd have had enough long since. Come on, come on. No, no, I mean, no, look at them. I mean, I don't even know most of them. But if I do know them, I haven't seen for donkeys years since they crawled out of the woodwork for the last freebie. A few words of encouragement, my old mate. I mean, I'll tell you what, a fella should never feel ashamed. Changed his mind at the last minute. I have no intention of changing my mind, Charlie. I've got my name over that door. I've got the woman I want. I ought to be thrilled to bits. Yeah, but you're not, though, are you? No. And I can't see why. Fear, innit? Fear. Fear? Yeah. Blind raging terror. Oh, oh God, listen to that. Oh, go on, Ali. Oh, but it could be a lot worse, you know that. I mean, you're not going into this marriage young and ignorant. Not like I desire. Oh, no, not you. No, you were going in with your eyes wide open. Aye. Wide open. Ah, um, that's it. Going into marriage with Bet Lynch with my eyes wide open. No wonder I'm bloody terrified. Whoa! Making brekker. What do you think I'm doing, painting a battleship? Well, I'm supposed to do that while you get your beauty sleep. The last beauty sleep I had, love, were in my cot. Even then it were only my mother thought it weren't a waste of time. <laughs> How are you feeling? Fine. Good. I intend to keep on feeling fine. Absolutely. I mean, what's the point of a wedding day if you can't enjoy yourself? I couldn't agree with you more. Glo. Hmm? Why do my guts keep churning as though they're making cheese? It's just pre-wedding nerves, that bit. Everybody gets why? If your wedding day is supposed to be the happiest day of your life. Questions are bad news today, Beth. Yeah. Right, now, I've got this morning all mapped out. Mm. Breakfast, then a long soak in a vanilla bubble bath, then the hairdressers, then last but not least, we bung you in your trousseau. You make me sound like a poodle that's being got ready for crufts. You want to look your best, don't you? Sure. I'm going to do that. No danger. Grapefruit sour. Here comes the groom, face like a prune. Mr. Gilroy? Mm. Oh, 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 oh it's, it's you, Hilda. It's turned eight, you know. Oh. oh, I feel like I've been turned to stone. I can't move. Haven't you been to bed? Oh. Well, I went for a couple of hours, but I couldn't sleep, so I got up for a sleeping draft. <laughs> so I see. Oh, I must have dozed off. Do you know, I had this... I had this dream, Hilda. As it was being chased through a bed of nettles by a woman brandishing a red-hot poker. Very peculiar. Well, of course, I'm not an expert on dreams. My gift's reading the teacups, you know. Yeah. But it sounds like the gypsy's warning to me, does that? Oh, she wasn't a gypsy, Hilda, no. No, she was a natural blonde, about 25, with a sun-worshipper's tan and figure. Oh, well, it definitely wasn't that, then. <laughs> Uh, just go and dip your long mop in your bucket, Hilda, there's a good girl. Do you know, if I was you, I'd be thinking about getting myself ready. Because I can't see Beth hanging about for long if you're late. Oh, excuse me. Tell me, Hilda, how long have you been down here on Earth? How do you mean? You're a Martian, aren't you? No, huh? I'm not. I'm a crab tree. God. She's going to take them curlers out before the wedding, isn't she? Well, I wouldn't bank on it. Alec, my old mate, a fateful day has dawned, so we'd better make the best of it, hadn't we? Uh, unless, of course, you want to hire a plane and be in Red Square by lunchtime. What I need is a hair of the dog, and then maybe there's just a chance my moving parts might start functioning again. Alec, old mate. What? Oh. Don't do it. The die is cast, Charlie. Huh? Tripping probably said that. Before they hanged him. Get this aspirin down you. Never again. Oh, how often have I heard you say that? I mean it this time. The bulls don't agree with me. I'd hate to think how much you sucked if it did. Anyway, I blame you. Me? Yes. Great friend you turned out to be. 
abandoning me in a, in a den of iniquity. So just hang about, Vera. You seemed to be having a very good time when I left. You never took your eyes off that barman. What barman? I don't remember no barman. Oh, come on. Do you think you can make it across that road? If we take it steady. Hey, and if I jack us, I'll come home with you last night. How did you get off? I don't honestly know. Oh, ain't he lovely, that Justin? Do you know I could eat him without any butter on? Hey, now, we'll have less of that. As from today, you forsake all others. Well, I've got to have something to occupy my time when Alex's feeling his age. <laughs> Has Justin made a good job of my head, you Oh, think? yeah, it's really lovely. What do you think of mine? Well, it's not bad. If you ignore them black roots and split ends. Bitch. Hey, it's next on the agenda. A cuppa and then it's pumpkin time. Pumpkin time? Yeah, well, you know how in Cinderella a pumpkin changes into a beautiful coach? Well, now it's time to change you into a beautiful bride. I shall give you a thick ear, Tom. <laughs> to your coffee. Tea, strong, slug of brandy, if you've got any. Uh, no, I'm a good, clean living girl. How very boring for you. Hello. Hmm? I feel badly again. Oh, well, don't. What am I doing? Who needs an husband? I mean, look at you. You've got a nice flat, a job you like, the odd date now and again. I could still have all that. What the hell am I getting married for? Because a good husband's better than all that. Well, I think so. Yeah, but who says Alex's going to be a good husband? He could turn out to be a right monster. For a start, I know he's mean. He might try to clutter me. He wouldn't dare try. I'd like to see you. Actually, I happen to know he's very fond of you. Morning, boss. Not left the country then. Jack, do me a favour. Don't play the comic today. All the wedding jokes have been told and you only know the crummy ones anyway. Aye, aye. Feeling a bit grumpy. Are we nervous? You're bound to be. So I'll give you a bit of advice, boss. The secret is to get the missus pushing the prom as soon as ever you can. <laughs> you reckon? It's the happiest days of my married life, that. When I was, when I was Terry with a baby. Yeah, I'll do that for you. It, well, I'm a Vera had hands full when I was Terry, you see. Didn't have no time to make my life a misery. So you want to get best name down in that pudding club. Between you and me, you won't exactly have to bend around in that department, do you know what I mean? And how would you know that? Just instinct. You... Uh, I'll, I'll go and open up for you, shall I? Instinct? Oh, first-hand experience, my old man. Well, you know, you know, Jack yeah. thinks it's God's gift to women. Actual fact, he's the bloody booby prize. <laughs> Charlie. Hmm? Would you phone back for me? You've not come to your senses and decided to go underground at last, have you? Would hey. you? Phone her. You're not sure if she's going to be there or not, are you? Just being cautious. Like a hard, cruel life has taught me to be. After all, I don't want to be left standing at that altar wearing a carnation and a sickly grin, do I? Alec, my old mate. All marriage is built on sand. But it's fairly unusual for the tide to be coming in as well. Huh. Yeah. Oh, oh they Gorgeous. Hey, hey. How's she feeling? Fabulous. Oh. Well, she's had the jitters a couple of times, but that's not uncommon, is it, in a bride to be? Well, she's more reason to feel uneasy than most. Oh, Betty, don't you start. Look, I know she's old enough to know what she's doing, but some women never are, are they, when it comes to chaps? Betty. I mean, we could save her from herself, couldn't we? We could lock her in that bedroom. <laughs> or we could drug her or hit on top of the head or something. Betty! Well, I only want what's best for her. I just want her to be happy. I mean, for all the faults. Oh, she deserves it. Hey, you two in there, get ready to have your eyes knocked out. <laughs> well, what do you think? Oh, it's terrific. Betty. Oh, I'll get <laughs> it. Well, it, it, it's very nice. Not like my frock. Course I do, you daft thing. You look smashing, oh, my love. Even Bonnie, go on, lie. Yeah, Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah. Sure you know what you're doing, lovey? I know exactly what I'm doing, Betty, love. 
Guess who that was? Not Michael Caine again. Pleading with me to change my mind and run off with him. He's becoming a pest, is that fella? It was the best man asking after your health. It was Alec, really, checking up on me. Making sure I hadn't talked me through so I'm booked on Concord. Very likely. It's very touching, you know, the way you two trust one another. Hey, shall we give him a right fright and turn up a quarter of an hour late? Why not? Oh, well, you can't do that. I mean, not even to Alec Gilroy. No, Betty, you're right. Of course we can't. We'll make it ten minutes. <laughs> oh, you're a monkey, Betty. What are you? Monkey. Come no, in there, Jacko. That's jolly. Ah, good luck, boss. Hey, just yeah. remember, you're serving the beer, not supping it, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> We'll need all the good luck it can get, will that fella? Oh, say that again. <laughs> Don't you knock marriage, Kevin, once do you? You've never looked better since you married me, and that's a fact. Well, you should say it. I've been thinking you'd be losing a load of weight. Uh, it's all a nagging again from her. Kevin, I think that's nagging. Wait till we've been married a few years. Well, <laughs> really good at it. Oh, how are you, eh? Hello, Hello, love. Hiya, oh, starting bad habits already, are you? Bad habits? Yeah, boozing at dinner time. You're supposed to be retired. Well, good night. I was looking for Hilda. She's not in. I thought she might be in here. No, no, she's gone to the wedding, hasn't she? You know, best than Alec Gilroy's. Oh, of course she has. I've forgotten all about that. Is there anything you wanted to talk yes. to Mrs. Elkin you know, about in particular, yes. Uncle Tom? Hi. Well, go on, then. That's all I'm going to say. Hi. <sighs> she's late. You may have got lucky, old man. She's been run over. Isn't it about time she was coming? She's only a bit late, Hilda. He's gone in, worried. You can see him sweating from here. Mm. I detest weddings. That's why you keep living in the sink. Might have been you sat there waiting for Bert, mightn't it? It could have been at one time. Good afternoon. Could you come closer? And we'll start tying the knot. We have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Elizabeth and Alexander, to ask his blessing on them and to share in their joy. With the grub. Grub? For the reception. I'm the caterer. It's in van outside. At your service, darling, in whichever way should tickle your fancy. Oh, tell me more. <laughs> Sam, lad, just oh. keep your eye on the till, will you? There's no need pub to take anything. There's you. I receive this ring as a sign of our marriage. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. With my body, I honour you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, I share with you. And all that I have, I share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the presence of God, and before this congregation, Elizabeth and Alexander have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of a ring. 
I therefore proclaim that they are husband and wife. That which God has joined together, let man not divide. Well, go on. Kiss me. Now, let us go to the register. I've signed the register. Well, she's been and gone and done it. Yeah. I think. Well, I feel sick. Oh, What's wrong with Vera? Oh, uh, she gets all remorse at weddings, Mr. Baldwin. Mm. Hey, what's this they're playing? Oh, perfect love. <laughs> Did you say something? Never said a word. It was a lovely salad, my baby. Now, Ilda, you'll only make your nose red. <laughs> oh, congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Becky, love. Thanks. Nice one, Beth. Oh, there were now two it's either. Were there, Alex? No. Congratulations, oh. Lynch. You never thought I'd manage it, did you, first love? No, I did not. Much happiness, Beth. Thanks, kids. I hope you have a better life in the future than you've had in the past. Why, thank you, Michael. What do you mean by that? What is the matter with you? Well, Mr. Gilman, yes, you're... Hey, is Alex feeling all right? He's looking a bit woe-begone. Yeah. People do all symptoms. Well, you suddenly realise he's no longer a single man. <laughs> You've got one good word to say for marriage. Divorce. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, yeah. Hey, Elder. They look better together than I thought they would. Yeah. I think he'd have been better off wearing them QB or so for the photographs. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never seen you working as hard before, Duck Egg. Cast your good deeds upon the water, Samuel. That's my motto, lad. Where is everybody? Oh, I'm sure. I see you're still nursing the same half an hour. Where's Duck's work? Up in the the has been doing no help. There's one for the ladies, our Jack, isn't it? What is it with you and Jack, don't we? Not me and Jack, but you and Jack, don't we? Well, I thought we'd have been that with Shanny's on a trail. I mean, that's what you get at proper bunch. It's Shampers, and it's waiting in the living room for you, Hilda. Oh. Come on through, the lot of you. I'm waiting for an answer. You tell me. Here comes the bride! Now there's a sight, empty belly. Hey, Duckworth, you are. You're not supposed to be the other side of that bar. You should be helping Dad pour the champagne, haven't I, darling? Darling? You know this lady's full name. Shall I introduce you? Well, uh, if it isn't the blight of my life. If it isn't my darling hobby. Uh, right, Jack, if you'll just shut your gob, we can make a start. Everybody got a glass? Oh, yes. no. Thank you. <laughs> right then, when everybody find, it'll be my duty to say a few appropriate words. Oh, must it? Hey, the bar. <laughs> well, I am going. Well, now, what can I say? Well, not too much, help, because I'm hungry. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I have known... My old mate's out of gear for more years than I ever was scared to remember, eh? And to be honest... For the first time in his life. <laughs> I never thought I'd see him in this situation. Married. I mean, I thought I'd talk him out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, lads. I'm glad somebody around here's got a sense of humour. Come on, Charlie. There's a good lad. The bubbles in this champagne are supposed to go up your nose, not into thin air. Here, here. But then the gorgeous Miss Lynch appeared with all her <clears throat> charms, and my poor old mate here went gaga on me. Now, that is not a pretty sight in a grown man, I'm telling you. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is only one cure, marriage. So my poor old mate went and got himself finally hitched, didn't he? Still, he can't crumble, can he? He's had more free time on the prey than the rest of us put together. <laughs> So, ladies and gents, I ask you to raise your glasses and drink with me a toast to the bride and the groom. Oh, and for those of you who are religiously inclined, you can say a little prayer as well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> the bride and groom. The bride, bride and groom. There you go. Good. That was a funny kind of wedding speech. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it? Hey. I'll make you a few words from the groom. Well, he told me. Come on, we were. go, go. <coughs> well, uh, oh. <coughs> like, uh, 
Uh, like, like Charlie says, uh, Bet and me are itched, and uh, it's as much a surprise to me as it is to him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a very nice surprise, and one I've been looking forward to ever since I first met her. <clears throat> what more can a middle-aged chap with fat hairy legs say? All I'd like to say is the grub's there to be scoffed. Hey, that's oh, the best thing I've heard tonight. Let's dive in then, eh? Right? Are you eating? Sorry no, not at all. I'll just have a nice drink. Yeah, I think I'll leave it to you. That was a lovely little speech, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. I meant every word of it, Ben. There's nothing going on between me and Jack Douglas, if that's what's bothering you. Or anybody else, for that matter. And as for the past. I'm not wearing white today, but then neither are you. Oh, I'm sorry, it's just somebody said. Got a bit jealous. I should hope. Come on, let's go sit down. Dear? Hello. Do you feel any better? I'm not sure. Did they miss me at work? Oh, well, Bowen's not back yet. I must still be at that wedding, do. Oh, well, that's summer anyway. Do you think you could make me a cup of tea, either? Well, don't you think you ought to be going home? Oh, no. Not till I feel and look a bit better. Now, Jack can spot an hangover quicker than a dog can spot a bitch. Well, he's had enough of a man, sir. There's somebody at door. You're paralysed and all. Hello. What are you doing here? I'm your taxi. What are you talking about? Oh, I got a call that somebody I wanted a taxi. You didn't know such thing. No, I didn't. <clears throat> to be honest, I was wondering if you fancied a drink tonight. Tonight? Well, that's when I drink. I don't know about you. No, I can't. Not tonight. Not tomorrow, then. Well, um, I will, but, um, I can't talk now. Oh, sorry, madam. Uh, the office must have made a mistake. Sorry to have troubled you. What were all that about? I went with taxi driver that brought me home last night. Well, what did he want? Wanted to know if I fancied another ride in his taxi. Oh, well. Say this for Alec Gilroy. Certainly did us proud. All you could eat uh -huh. and drink. <laughs> oh, oh, I could feel like quite light, I did. <laughs> oh. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Well, I wouldn't like to see your face when there is. Well, well, I had something to tell you, but it can wait. Oh, go on, you can tell me. I'm not too pie-eyed to take it in, you know. I'm just floating on a cloud of champagne bubbles. <laughs> well, me estate agent, he says he has a bungalow I might be interested in. Out Formby way, you know, for when I finally retire. Oh, Formby. It's near Southport, that, isn't it? Aye. Yeah, I believe it's very nice out there. I'm going to see it tomorrow. Oh, I hope it keeps fine for you. I was wondering, Hilda. What? If you'd like to come with me. I'd like your opinion on it. We could make a day of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that, Tom. Mm. Well, Mrs. Gilroy? Hello. Very, thank you, Mrs. Fairclough. Yeah. Have you enjoyed yourself like you said you would? <laughs> I have, yeah, Glove. Do you know there's just one thing worrying me? What's that? Anybody told you about the facts of life? Hey, I were told them sitting on co-op steps, love, when I were twelve. Well, that's all right, then. Anyway, I'd better get off, Alec. <laughs> get it like the champagne of yours, you know. That won't do. Not with my overheads, eh? Ah. Uh. Yeah, she's a good lassie's bet, you know. And I should know. <laughs> well, I mean, she was my lodger for years, you know, I. Oh, I were the best of mates, me and Bet. <laughs> she's a diamond, is Bet. Yes, I know, Alf. I've done very well for myself today. Very well, I. I have that flaming thing going this time in the morning. Did you say something? I said! Did you have to have that thing blasting away? My head feels like it's playing host to the World Club Dancing Championships. Yeah, well, whose fault is that, then? You didn't have to try and suck the place dry. You did go at it as if it was going out of fashion, Jack. Well, that's what weddings are for. It was a good deal, though, wasn't it? Oh, matter of opinion. <laughs> I have been to better. Wasn't exactly the social event of the year, was it? Oh, I think that looked lovely. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Any road, if it makes Happy Alec any easier to live with, I'm all for it. Here, get that down, you. 
And don't look at it like that. It'll do you a lot more good than that stuff you were swilling last night. Right, now then. What do you reckon, eh? Very nice of you, Alec, but we've just brewed up. Still playing the comic, Jack. This is for Bet. Oh, yeah. Practice him better. Wonder what she's done to deserve that. Then. She's married me, hasn't she? You'd do well to remember that, Jacko. Because from now on, I want her treated with the dignity and respect that's due to her. <coughs> well, that little honeymoon didn't last very long, did it? They haven't been on honeymoon. I didn't mean for them. I meant for us. Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. No apples. Apples? What would I want apples for? <laughs> for the teacher. Oh, yeah, that's very funny, is that? Yeah. Take no notice, lad. I think it's a grand thing you're doing, going back to college. What are you doing again? Business studies. Oh, that's right. Aye. Qualifications. You can't beat them. Exactly. So we'll see you'll be laughing in a couple of years' time. <laughs> Curly. What? Don't forget your dinner money now, will you? <laughs> see you. Oh, see you. Um, can I leave that with you, Alf? It's yeah, uh, Deirdre. Of course you can. I'll bring them round later. About tea time, all right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it will. Is right. that Deirdre all right? Do you know I haven't seen her for a couple of days? She's not got a bug or something, has she? Oh, she's far too busy for that. Oh, really chucked herself into this council business. Yeah, well, you know how demanding it can be, if anybody does. Yeah, well, I know the more you do, the more folk will let you do and all. Yeah, you try telling Deirdre that. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Do you know, I think I'll go and put the kettle on while we've got a spare minute. Right, love. Did uh, Hilda say when she wanted her order? No, she didn't, but it won't be this morning. Oh? Well, she's gone off to Farm B with my Uncle Tom, you know, when she's finished at the Rovers. They've gone to have a look at that bungalow, I fancy. Oh, he was telling me about that. He seems very chuffed about it. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't expecting you for another quarter of an hour yet. Yeah, well, I thought we'd get cracking right away, you know, make most of it. That way we can have more time in Southport before we go down to see Bungalow. Oh, way. I can't remember the last time I was in Southport. Hey, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this. If it's half as good as it is on photographs... Oh, it is. And they've got some lovely shops. No, I mean bungalow. And, and they're chucking in old carpets and curtains as well. Oh. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. No, me and all. Well, come on, then, because I know a lovely little cafe where we can stop off and have a bite to eat. Oh, there'll be no need for that. I've put a few sandwiches together and I've done a flask. Well, I thought we could stop and have a picnic somewhere, you know, break the journey, like. Hey, Hilda, it's not exactly halfway across the world, you know. Well, no, perhaps not. But it's not exactly the other side of the red wreck, neither, is it? I'll go and get the sandwiches. Is that all there is? It's good for you. Well, there's not a lot there to do a day's work on, though. Well, it's the young. It's better than chips, any road. Well, I like chips. Hey, this is not to do with that taxi driver of yours, is it? What do you mean? Well, is that one of these? Vegetarian types, is there? No, I don't know, do I? I just fancied a bit of salad for a change of all right. Pie, you're a dark horse, you are. Where you picked up that taxi driver? After playing Mary Eck with me, just because I wanted to go to Pink Flamingo for a bit of fun. And then you waltz off with him, Joanne? His name's Don Brennan, and I didn't waltz off with him, Vera. No, that business ain't club. How he said that you were fed up and wanted to go home, and all the time you had him waiting outside for you. He just happened to be there, Vera. Oh, yeah, of course he did. Well, you can believe what you like. Yeah, well, you're still going out with him tonight, aren't you? We're just going out for a quiet drink. It's not a crime, is it? Well, it'd be less of a crime if we were taking me out for a quiet drink. Ooh, I could have him on a butter for my tea any day and week. Ooh. Oh, I'm sorry, Ivy. There's not enough air to keep me going this after. I'm off down to chip Do you want out? No, not for me. Right. I won't be long. I'll right, I'll uh, make us a fresh pot of tea. Hey, you don't fancy getting me a taxi, do you? <laughs> Mr. Hubwood. That's right. Paul Peters. Oh, pleased to meet you. Uh, this is Mr. Peters from the estate agency. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mrs. Hopwood. Uh, oh, I'm not Mrs. Hopwood. No, I'm just a friend. That's right. I'm sorry. Just come to give the benefit of my advice, the woman's point of view, like. I see. Shall we go in, then? Yes. Come on, Hilda, love. After you. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Al. Oh, 
and how's the new Mrs. Gilroy this morning? I'll let you know when she surfaces. Oh, oh. oh Alec must have a sight more going for him than I gave him credit for. Well, he's been up since the crack of dawn, hasn't he? Nothing gets in the way of his business interests. Yes, all right. Sorry, I'm so late. The meeting's only just finished. Honestly, some of the fellas on that committee, you'd think their lives depended on getting their own way. What committee would that be, love? Environmental health. Oh, say no more. Yeah. Anyway, where you have it? Uh, you just a lot of red lime. Uh, when are you ready, Gloria? Yeah, I'll be with you as soon as I can. Thanks, you. Morning. Or is it afternoon? I seem to have lost track of all time. Well, I'd like to see you. How are you feeling now? How do I look? Well, exactly. Where's Jacko? Well, he's in the cellar, isn't he? And Alex nipped out for half an hour. Okay. But you're managing on your own. Well, I'm trying. But now you're in. <clears throat> Leave it with me. Jacko! Oh. Up here, quick as you like. <laughs> <laughs> Married life doesn't seem to be doing you any harm. No complaints, up to now. Well, they say the first 30 years are the worst. Well, I hope you'll be very happy together. Oh, thank you. You want in there? Gloria is busting a gut behind you. Give her a hand. How did Tommy get on with the cellar? And I am telling you to come up here for half an hour, aren't I? I'll be in the back if I'm... <laughs> well, very good. Well, if there's anything else you want to know, you know where to get hold of me. Thanks very much, Mr. Peters. I look forward to hearing from you. Mrs. Ogden? Oh, bye. <laughs> well, what do you think, Hilda? Oh, I think it's lovely, Sam. I can quite see why you're so taken with it. Well, if it were a bit more than I wanted to pay, I don't mind admitting. But if it's somewhere I can settle to for the rest of my life, well, I think it'd be well worthwhile. It's just the sort of place me and Stan always dreamed about. There was a lovely little place out Lytham Way, a bit like this, actually. We used to pass it on shower trips to Blackpool. We always used to joke about it being our place one day. <laughs> Just being kept aired like till we were ready to move in. Not that we could ever have afforded it. Never in a million years. Even if we could have done. It's too late now, isn't it? Too late for Stan, for sure. But not too late for you, Hilda. Hey? Eh? I didn't just bring you out here for you to give me the benefit of your advice, although I was very grateful for it. it. It weren't just that. I'm not with you. Hilda, since you and I got to know each other, well, we've become great mates, haven't we? And we've had a lot of laughs together. Well, yeah, I suppose we have. Not that I'll be seeing so much of you from now on, though. Not if you move out here. Well, that's going to be up to you, isn't it? Why? I want you to come with me, Hilda. Hey, listen, are you having another? No, we should be getting back, shouldn't we? Well, I just thought you wanted to hang around. You know, I'm off chance that Speedy Gonzalez might drop him. Give it a rest, will you, Vera? You've done no good go on about me and Donald in a time. I wouldn't mind having me even without him yet. Yeah, but tonight's the night, eh, kid? So where are you going then? You must have some idea. Yeah. I don't know. It won't be Pink Flamingo Club, I can tell you that. Mm, quiet type, is there? That worst, you know that one you've got to watch? Oh, yeah, the worst. Or best, depending on which way you look at it. <laughs> Vera, will you stop talking about me and Dom? Yeah. We're just going out for a quiet drink and that's it, full stop. I wonder if that's what he's got in mind, Donald. It don't matter what he's got in mind, it's what I've got in mind that matters. And after that, George Ward, oh, well, I'm not in any hurry to get involved with a fellow again and tell him what he's about. I'm sorry, kid. Yeah. I'm just pleased you found somebody. Well, I've forgotten about George Ward. No, I haven't. Any mistakes I've made with him here, I'm certainly not going to make them again. Now you're ready, come on. Yeah. I'll leave that. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hi, hello. Hello. <coughs> the wanderer returns. <laughs> what are you doing up here? What does it look as if I'm doing? Well, I thought I told you to get that cellar sorted out. Never mind hanging round Gloria like a wasp round a jump pot. Ben told him to come up and give me a hand. 
Bet did. That's right. So if you want me down the cellar, kindly take it up with her. And then tell me, because even I can't be in two places at once. Uh, no, no. Right, no, well, perhaps that's right. I mean, the bar always comes first during opening hours. We've got to keep the punters happy. Yes, right then, well, carry on up here as long as you need it. Then you can finish off in the cellar. How did she seem? As well as can be expected. Let's see. I thought maybe if you and Beck come through to the bar and give us a like. No, no. We're quite happy to leave it in your capable hands for now. Just about to give you up. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm late, love. I've only just come back. Oh, do you want out to eat? No, Ty, I had a barn cake in the shop. I'll have a bottle of shandy with you, though, if you've got a minute. Yeah, of course, yeah. You know, don't know what Alf Roberts would be without you in that shop. Oh, Kevin, you'd probably get somebody else. Yeah, not as good as you, though. You were, if you're waiting gold to him, you were. Not this morning, I have been. Do you know, I've thought of now, but my Uncle Tom and this bungalow of his. What can he be thinking of, Kev, planning to move out there? I thought him and Mrs. O were getting on like a house on fire. I'm sorry if I upset you, Hilda. Oh, you haven't upset me. Well, you've hardly said a word all the way back. Well, it has come as a bit of a shock, you know. I know that, love, and I'm sorry. But, you see, I couldn't say how far we went in case you hadn't come with me. And I thought, well, once you saw a place, you'd see what it could be like for two of us. Well, look, Tom, I'm sorry if you were expecting me to give you an answer here and now. No, I wasn't honest. I mean... You can't rush something like that, can you? I just wanted you to think about it. I noticed you never said much about marriage. You weren't thinking of living tally, were you? Oh, good gracious me, no. I can assure you, Hilda, if we move into that bungalow together, we do it proper, as man and wife. I'd have thought that would have gone without saying. I see. Look, Hilda, I know what you must be thinking about right now, about you and Stan. And all them happy times you had together. And all them memories. Well, I understand that. But he's gone now, love. And there's now anybody can do to change that. Same as I'm on my own now. And what I'm saying is we've got to look to the future. I mean, I worked long and hard for my retirement. And so did you. And we've earned it. And I can't think of anything I'd like more. It's to go and share that little bungalow with you. Right, that's your lot. Sorry, Jack. Right, I'm off, love, before Lull and Hardy in there find us somewhere else to do. Are you all right now? Yeah, ten minutes and I'll be after you. Then I'm going to put this place right out of my mind till tomorrow morning. Eh? Hey? I'm off tonight, aren't I? You're off? Yeah, I fixed it with Bet before the wedding. Hey, no, I'm sorry, Lord, but I fixed it with Alec, and it is his name over the door, you know. I see. Well, there's only one way to sort this out. And that suits me. Perhaps we'll find out just who is giving the orders round here, eh? After you. Do you want a couple more aspirins? No, Tarlow. How are you feeling now? Well, I reckon I'll live. Hey, you were a good do, though, eh? Yeah. Thanks, Alec. Do you know you made me feel like a million dollars? Did you ever doubt it? Uh, I hope we're not interrupting anything. We're just about to have a quiet cup of tea. Of course, you're not cock. Come on through. What can we do for you? Well, we just wanted to get something cleared up. That was all, you know. Go on, Jack. Me? Hey. Go on. Right. It's about the nights off, like. What about them? Well, you told me I could have my night off tonight. So? So I cleared it with Alec to take my night off tonight. Well, you can't both be off, can you? Well, we know that, so we're just wondering who is off tonight. Well, I would have thought the answer to that's obvious. Well, as long as one of you is here, I don't care who it is. It's up to you. I'm sure you don't want Bet and I running your lives for you. Sort it out between you, eh? Well, I was going to have my head on at half five. Yeah, well, I've got a private engagement at all, haven't I? Hang on, hang on. Do you mind sorting it out in the other place? I've only just got the top of my head back. Yeah, sorry, Bet. Come on, Jack. I think I handled that rather well, hmm? I couldn't have handled it better myself, Alec. Do you know, I reckon we're going to make a great team. What have I always told you? I have got some on tonight, glow honest. Well, I suppose I can always put my hair off till tomorrow. Good girl, I'll make it up to you. Yeah, you will, like tomorrow. Done. <laughs> Tell you one thing, though, Jack. I reckon those two have made it very clear who's running this place. We are. I'll see you. Bye. Ciao.
Uh, where do you keep your hairspray, love? I've just run out. Oh, it's just up there, Mrs. Tilsley. Oh, yeah. All right, well, then, what time are you finishing tonight? Oh, do I have to get me on tea again? Oh, ten minutes, I promise you. I've done the spuds, Kevin. Just go and turn them on. Right, ten minutes. And if you're not up, I'm going to come down and drag you out. Oh, Kevin, hang on a minute. I want a word with you. Hey? It's about my Uncle Tom. Oh, yeah. How did he get on with the bungalow? Is he having it? But I don't know. What I do know is... That'll do all right. All right. Hang on a minute, Kevin. Um, that's 95 pence, please, Mrs. Tilbury. Right. Oh, I uh, hope you enjoy your night out. What's she been saying? Who? Vera Fermi Portsmouth. That's all. What's she been saying about me and now? She hasn't been saying anything. You wouldn't have come in for a spray at this time of night if all you were going to do is sit in front of your telly now, would you? Oh, <laughs> sorry. I see what you mean. <laughs> hey, mind you, if there's out you want to tell us. No, there isn't. <laughs> see you. Are you right a little stirred, are you? Are you? He's only asked Mrs. Oak to go with him. Eh? Hey? Uncle Tom. You know he took her to go and have a look at that bungalow. Well, now he's asked her to go and live there with him. He come in the shop and he told me. Well, Uncle Tom and Mrs. O living over the brush. No, Kevin, they get married first. Married? And what's she say about that? She's thinking about it. It's great, isn't it? Great? Yeah, well, they get on, don't they, the two of them? They become so pally. And, oh, Kevin, what is there for Mrs. O around here? There's not a lot to keep her here anymore, is there? Yeah, well, I reckon that's for her to decide. I know, I'm just saying that's all. Wouldn't only be Mrs. O who'd be in the clover, neither. What do you mean? Well, she might want to sell her house, might she? And I reckon with you and me being a little bit special to her, well, it might just come at the right price. Hang about, hang about. You're about a mile and a half ahead of me, eh? I know, Kevin. It's just something to think about, that's all. Wouldn't only be a good move for Mrs. O and Uncle Tom. Be a belting move for us and all. Hiya. Oh, come in now, now, one minute. You did say it was just a casual drink, didn't you? Only I've, I've not got dressed up. No, you look fine to me. Oh, best be going then, don't we? Hey, yo! <laughs> it's only yours. Hello, Dom. This is my husband, Jack. Nice to meet you, Squire. <laughs> what are you doing here, Vera? What if I were you just saying that you're going for a quiet drink? You know, not special. Well, me now, Jack's doing notes tonight, so I thought we could go all go out together. You what? Yeah, it'd be a bit of fun. And look, I have Jack and Donald have plenty to talk about. He used to be a taxi driver, you know. That's right. Sorry, Donald, I didn't know anything about this. Well, if, if, if you've got special lined up. No, no, not really. It's just that. Oh, well, can we come then? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, well, right, that's settled then. Come on, you. Hey, just go in your car, I take it. Just as you like. Yeah, let's go, Dom, lad. Vera. Oh, just what do you think you're playing at? Well, you said he didn't want to ever starting up, didn't you? We're coming. <laughs> and they said it wouldn't last. Oh, well, it just shows you how wrong folk can be. I mean, it must be all of 24 hours now. We're still as happy as the moment we walked down the aisle. Well, I've no complaints so far. Not that I ever dreamt of spending my honeymoon like this when I was a kid. But then again, you can't have everything. Now, look, I've told you as long as we're settled. We'll take some time off then, eh? <laughs> what would I want to go jetting halfway around the world for when I've got everything I want? Everything? Almost. Hey. hey. I wouldn't say no to another gin and tonic. Oh. <laughs> Show you around, your mate. Oh, fine, thanks, Mr. Barlow. Me too. I'll just finish this and then I'll be off. I'm going to pop round to see Deirdre. I've got one or two fundraising ideas I want to discuss with her. Yes, yeah, she did mention it. So, how's college going? Oh, better than I ever expected. And he's not the oldest in his class either. Not class, study group, if you don't mind, Mrs. Bishop. Sorry, no. There's 19 of us in our group and four of us are mature students. I'm not fired up with it, I can tell you. Oh, not that we've done anything today, like. you just uh, having a chat about the course, you know, enrolling and getting to know each other. It's tomorrow when we really get down to it. Sorry, Ken, but you did ask, and once you get him started... No, I'm very interested. Really, I am. Yeah, well, before he gets into full flow, I think I'll be off. It's not that I'm not interested, but I have heard it all before. In fact, I've heard nothing else since he came home. I'll see you later. All right, bye, Amanda. Bye. bye. So, um, bye. what kind of subject do you do? Bye. Ah, well, well, for the first three weeks, we've got... All right, mate. Oh, hello. How'd you get on, then? Oh, fine, thanks. Tracked it, then, did you? Okay. Got a milk monitor's job. First one done the ladder is that milk monitor. Why don't you grow up, Kev? I'm surprised Sally lets you out on your own. It must be way past your bedtime. Ah, uh, it's always got other things on her mind, don't you? Don't think she'll even miss me. Uh, quite pleased, Glow. Whatever, Mr. Barlow and Einstein here, the shopping. Uh. Oh, thanks for letting me use your washing machine again, Mrs. O. All right, love. Listen, you can leave him if you want. I'll give you a knock when it's finished. 
It's all right. I'm in no rush. Thought you might have fancied a bit of company. Oh, I. Uncle Tom's been in the shop this afternoon. I see. So you'll know all about it then, this Formby business. Yeah, I do. And I think it's a smashing idea. Yeah, well, it's not up to you, is it? So, what do you reckon? You must have thought about this. You've thought about now to else ever since you come out with it. And? I said I'd thought about it. I didn't say I decided out. But you like Uncle Tom, don't you? You get on so well together. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't, but it's a big step, Sally. Well, I think it's dead romantic, honest I do. And you know, it's no less than you deserve. You gave the best years of your life to your stem. You've worked your fingers to the bone to keep house and home together all these years. And you know, I reckon that you're entitled to something for yourself. Yeah, I know all that. Tom said the same thing, but it's still not easy. Well, what have you got to look forward to round here? Walking yourself to a shadow for Mike Baldwin and Alec Gilroy and Dr. Lowther. Do you know there'd be none of that with Uncle Tom? He'd treat you like a princess. And if you're worried about your friends, well, they'd be able to come and see you, won't they? I know me and Kev, we're never going to be off your doorstep. And you'll be able to come and see us any time you want to. Yeah, Tom said that and all. And he's right, isn't he? You know, I still can't get it into my head that... that somebody should think so much of me to... well, to want to do all this for me. Well, Uncle Tom does. And if you tell him that you and him are, are going to go off to Formby and start a new life together, do you know he'd be the happiest man on God's earth? And when you really think about it, really think about all the things you're going to have going for you if you do go, and you weigh them up against what you'll have if you stop here, well, there's just no contest, is there? Tell you what, I'll fill up this pot and have another cup. Have I? Why? Well, some of the things it comes out with. It might not exactly be Paul Newman anymore, but it still tells a belting joke. Provided you're not too picky about colour of it. Oh, don't be so flaming stuffy. You laughed enough last night, you and that darling Don. Well, he certainly did. Well, then he'd have to, wouldn't he, Vicky? Howdy, mate. Well, he probably thinks that's the way we always carry on when we've had a few drinks. Well, don't you? <laughs> Look, it might be where you and your Jack carry on, Vera, but you can include me out. I was dead ashamed, honest, I was. Oh, people, it were only a bit of fun. Anyway, I'd have thought you'd have been grateful, Miss Owl. Grateful for what? Well, I, I come here, of course. I mean, at least it filled in some of them rotten silences. Vera, I keep telling you there weren't no rotten silences. Chance would have been a fine thing. Yeah, but there would have been if me and our Jack hadn't have been there to keep the laughs coming. Well, that's something we'll never know, isn't it, Vera? Oh, well, if we're in we way, you should have said something, shouldn't you? Yeah. I tried to, Vera, several times, but we seem to have a bad line or something. Right. If that's all the thanks you get for helping a mate out, well, I know what to do in future, won't I? Is that a threat or a promise? So when are you seeing him again, then? Never, probably, after last night. Well, haven't they said anything like? Yeah, they said goodbye as he drove off. Not that it's any of your business, Vera. Are you coming? Well, as long as you don't mind. Mind what? Well, being in my company, of course. Being seen crossing a public street with me like. Well, I'll tell you what, Vera. Let's do both of us a favour. Just slip this bag over your head. Thank you, Mr. Roberts, can I ask you a question? Ask away, love. How much do they um, tend to go for? What? You know, the houses round here. Well, it depends on the sort of house, doesn't it? In this street, oh, 12, 14,000, something like that. Why, don't tell me you're sick of living over the shop already. Of course not. Don't be daft. I was just wondering that were all. How much would Mrs. R get for her house? You know, if she decided to sell that. Oh, Elder Ogden? Yeah. Well, same, I suppose. But what would make her think of selling? Well, I don't know. I mean, people suddenly do tend to get it in their heads to sell, don't they? For all sorts of reasons. Yeah, have to be a blooming good reason to get Elder to sell, I'll tell you that much. Unless you've heard something, have you? Me? 
Yeah, it couldn't be, could it, that she's thinking of going to live in Formby? Formby? Aye, in this little bungalow your Uncle Tom keeps talking about. Go on living in sin, you mean? No, of course I don't mean that. Then what do you mean, Mr. Roberts? Well, getting married, of course. What else? Hey, you don't think she might be thinking of doing that, then, do you? Well, I didn't think that until you put the idea in me just now. Me? Now what have I said? It was more what you didn't say, love. Is that it, then? Well, I don't know, do I, Mr. Roberts? I mean, if that's what they're really thinking of doing, nobody said out to me about it. Oh, no, of course not. Then again, I suppose it wouldn't be a bad idea, really. I mean, because she's living in one house on her own, and he's living in another house on his own. Certainly, and don't forget what they say. Two can live as cheaply as one. Well, right. Mm. Oh, wouldn't that be smashing, Mr. Roberts, if that's what they were really thinking about doing? Yeah, wouldn't it? <laughs> so how did you go on, then? Ah, um, over a phone, be. How do you mean exactly, Gloria? How did I go on? Yeah, I just wondered, you know, what sort of a day you'd had. Oh, I see. Oh, quiet, you know. Who told you, then, that I'd been over to Formby? Um, Sally, I think. Oh, did she? And what else did she tell you? Nothing. Why was there more? None that I know anything about. Hilda, what I told you to make a start in the living room. Yes, that's right. Only since then, us up here at the front have had new orders, haven't we? New orders from whom? Well, from Bet Lynch, as was, of course. She said she wanted to start making an ear. Hilda, you have read it, have you? What? The legend over that door announcing to the world and his wife that one A. Gilroy happens to be the gaffer round here these days. Now, will you bring your limited talents to bear on that living room carpet, please? Oh, just as you like. Only it's not right, this, you know, chopping and changing folk all the time. Hilda, feel free to chun her away to your heart's content. Only just have a hoover in your hand while you're doing it, will you, love? She's dead right, you know. I mean, he tells you one thing, she tells you another. You don't worry about him coming and going round here these days. So don't tell me, Jack. Tell them. Right, I will. Seriously? Of course. Right. Which one would you like, then? Hey. Bet or Alec? Only, if you're going to have something out with somebody, the sooner the better, that's where I say. Now, better be your best better. No, no, just hang on a minute, go. Oh, dear, Jack. You're not getting cold feet already, are you? Let's now tackle them about it. Oh, yeah? When? I'll pick the moment, won't I? And when I do, there'll be bird and feathers flying round here. What culinary masterpiece have you conjured up for me dinner today? Well, how does pie and peas sound? Is that before or after they've given me indigestion? <laughs> I think I'd better go and feed this brew. I think you? you better add. <laughs> See you later, love. Mr. Roberts, can I take my break now? Yeah, right, love. Right, come on, you get a <laughs> Look, hey, that sounds a bit more promising. <laughs> <laughs> Love's young dream, eh? Do you know, I think there must be something going around in air this week. It must be pretty strong to get to Will Drogden. Will Drogden? Yeah, and Tom Hopwood. Are you kidding? Well, according to Alfie, um, really, Alf? Yeah, well, I got that from what is usually a reliable source, but look, it was all unofficial, so for Pete's sake, say nothing to nobody. Right. Well, don't worry about us, Alf. No, we wouldn't dream of saying a word, would we, Ivy? Well, I wouldn't. Hey, talk of the devil. Oh, yes. Now, sly boots. What's all this we've been hearing, then? Hearing? Hearing about what? Well, about you and Uncle Tom Cobbley. Planning on walking off into the sunset together. I see. And who told you that, then? Now, Hilda, you know us news hounds never reveal our sources, do we? The question is, is it true? Ah, but that's not really the question, though, is it, baby? Isn't it? No, the real question is, is it any of your business? And from where I'm standing, I'd say the answer to that was anything but, wouldn't you? Oh, honestly, Vera. Now what I say, you're about as subtle as a flipping sledgehammer. Yeah, thanks a lot, Vera, for respecting my confidence. Well, you never find out, out do you, unless you ask? Anyway, I never told who told us. Except you just happened to be standing in my shop and looking straight at me. Oh, well, I won't worry too much, Al, cos, I mean, I don't think there's a grain of truth in it. Oh, aye? And how do you work that out, either? Well, don't you think she'd have said something if there was? Well, happens she would. But then again, don't you think she'd have said something if there wasn't? Eh? Now then, Tom, something you said, were it? Eh? Hey. To Hilda, that she's gone and left you all on your own today. Well, if it was, I don't know what it was. I'll see you later, Bet. I should hope so, love. But don't you feel a right pillock, though? Pillock? You're sat in a classroom surrounded by kids. It's not a classroom like you'd remember one, Jack, with, with slates and chalk. And it does have its advantages being one of the oldest there. Such as? Well, the girls. I mean, well, they're at that stage, aren't they, where they find slightly older men almost irresistibly attractive. I see. I'd know if you already are the girlie. Well, I wouldn't say that open hostility has broken out already, but uh, give it time, eh? Give it time. 
Have you uh, said anything to either of them yet, then? Not yet, yeah. but I will. When, though? Look, I'm going to flip me moments. Look, look, us men are not like you women, you know, all talk behind folks' back. When we say something, we do it. Oh, yeah. Now, you'll have a cup, will you, Tom? It is fresh made. No, I'm not, thanks, Hilda. I'm in a, a bit of a hurry, really. Oh, right. Well, at least sit down, take the weight off your feet for a minute. Oh, Tom. Well, you've thought about it, have you? What we talked about the other day. Oh, well, of course I have. Thought a lot about it. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm still thinking about it, really. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, it is a big decision, Tom. Well, it's a big decision for both of us, Hilda. Yes, right. So there's, um, well, there's no sense in rushing in where angels fear to tread, like, is there? Well, I suppose not. But I thought it only fair to tell you, love, I've been and put a deposit down on Bungalow. So all being well, it's mine now, whatever happens. Oh, I see. Yes, well, I suppose if you've, uh, if you've really set your heart on something, there's uh, no point in letting the grass grow, is there? <laughs> At least, that's what my Stan always used to say. <laughs> Now then, Jack, I believe you wanted a word. I did. On behalf of the staff. Did you tell you that? She did, didn't you? Well, that was what you said, wasn't it, Jack? That you wanted to have a word with Alec, um, first chance she got. About, um... Oh, that, Alec. Well, it did something or nothing, really, Alec. It, it, it'll, it'll keep. Now, in my experience, Jack, things that people reckon will keep have a very nasty habit of going off if left unattended. And it couldn't have been all that unimportant, I wouldn't have thought, if the official spokesman's already been appointed. So would you like to come through now for a minute? I'll see you later. And what was all that about? Well, between you and me, I think our Jack is about to give your Alec a piece of his mind. By the heck, Gloria. He'll need a very sharp knife to do that. What about any road? Oh, industrial relations, really, I suppose. Oh, yes. All I said was, what would you think about it if it did come for yeah. that way off? But all I'm saying is, what's the point in speculating on something what might never happen? Well, of course it's going to happen. I told you what she told me. Yeah, you told me you'd asked her to marry him. Well, then. Well, what you never said was what her answer was. Well, she's thinking about it. I've told you, once she's thought about it, that'll be it, oh, won't yeah. it? And suppose she turns him down? She won't turn him down. She might. Oh, come on, kid. Then how could she turn that down, the chance of going living over there in a dead swish bungalow? That's what she's always dreamed of, is that? I mean, would you turn that down? I might. There again, I suppose I'm the wrong one to ask, aren't I? What do you mean? Oh, I don't really fancy your Uncle Tom that much. I'm serious, Kevin. Oh, yeah, I can see you are. And also, in my opinion, a bit previous as well. Talking about house, well, isn't even on the market yet. And what's more, may never be coming on the market. Hey, so, what's all this I've been hearing about uh, your Uncle Tom and Elder Ogden? Oh, who, who told you? Alf Roberts. Oh, where the flaming hell did he get it from? Um, Sally, I heard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, why? Is it all off again now, then? Gloria, we don't even know if this is definitely on yet. Isn't it amazing the way these things never lose anything in the telly? <laughs> Isn't it just? So, supposed to be private and confidential, was it? All this stuff Mrs O confided in you last night. Don't look at me like that, Kevin. I never said any of that. What, not even to Alf Roberts? No, You actually. must have said something. All I said was, how much does um, houses go for, like Mrs Ogden? Oh, that was all, was it? Yes, it was. And what's wrong with that? Anyway, don't speak to me like that, Kevin Webster. Like what? Like you were some sarky school teacher and I was a snotty nose kid you'd found fags in my handbag. Hey, now hang on a minute. Yes, well, uh, thank you for bringing this little matter to my attention, Jack. Well, as long as you have got it firmly fixed in your mind, Ali, but all this has got no to do with me, really. I mean, I am not complaining. In fact, I'm, I'm happy with the set up. More than happy. Yes, well, I think it would be only fair to say that you have made that crystal clear, Jack. In fact, there's only one thing that puzzles me, really. Oh, huh? Well, if they feel as strongly as you reckon they do, and you, by your own admission, are practically ecstatic about the current staff arrangements, how come you got appointed shop steward for the day? Well, I mean, isn't that obvious, though, Alec? Not to me, 
Jack. But do feel free to enlighten me. It's because they are women, are it? And I am a mother. Oh, yeah. So? So, I mean, they realise how much better it would sound coming from a man, Alec. I mean, you know what they're like. Uh, all these women's live like is all very well, until there comes time for somebody to be chosen to tell the management straight, Alec. And, and that's when they start looking round for a man, isn't it? <laughs> well, lucky for them, Jack, eh, that you were available, eh, to tell the management straight. <laughs> but, but as I said, Alec, all as I was doing, really, was passing on their thoughts on the subject, and that is all. In fact, all you were, Jack, was the messenger boy. You've got it. You've got it, Alec. You. <laughs> well, lucky for you, which isn't Persia. Persia? Yeah, it's only in Persia, you know, uh, when the ruling management got any bad news, they used to kill the messenger who brought it. <laughs> Them were the days, eh, Jack? <laughs> You're right, you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Told him straight, did you, Jacko? <laughs> Told you, did he? The peasants are revolting again. Uh, not that it came as any great surprise. So? So? Do we do out about it, or don't we? Oh, I think so, love. Don't you? So? So just leave it to me, eh? Taxi back to work, was it, madam? Well, fine. <laughs> well, I'll only stay a minute, but I was passing my up to my catch here. Hey, what a great night last night, eh? Do you think so? Oh, yeah. Oh, I haven't laughed so much for years. Hey, that uh, Jack Duckworth. What a character, though, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. They broke more when they made Jack, thank God. Hey, listen, uh, I was wondering, are you free tonight? Right. Well, I'm not doing anything special. I thought you might be the same boat. Well, uh, I'd have to consult my social secretary, of course. Yeah, of course, really. <laughs> but off the top of my head, I said there's not that many cocktail parties. Well, not that I can't cancel anyway. Well, shall we say uh, eight o'clock then, eh? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll see you then, then, eh? Bye. Bye. So, how are you, any road? Oh, all right, I suppose. Don't sound too convinced. Well, Sally told you, I suppose, did she? About me and Tom. I must say, I'd have thanked her more if she hadn't told the half of Weatherfield while she was at it. Oh, yeah, well, you know what she'd like, Mrs. Hill. I don't think she meant to say anything. She just sort of slipped out. Mm. Well, it's no real harm done. And if I'm honest, it's no more than I've done myself. More than once. And if anybody should know by now it's me, that if you want someone kept quiet round here, the only safe way is to keep your mouth shut. Only, well, I had to talk to somebody about it, you see, Kevin. Because, I mean, when you're the one that's been left, that's what you miss most, you know. Having somebody, just somebody, to talk things over with. Even if he is taking bags of no notice at the time or sleeping it off with his gob wide open. I'm sure. Some of I've never really been very good at, you know, making my mind up about things. Stan always made the decisions in our house. Even if they were the wrong ones sometimes. So, what are you going to do now, then? Or would you perhaps be better keeping your mouth shut this time? You know what you just said? Oh, Kevin, if I can't tell you, who can I tell? Not that there's that much to tell, really. It's very tempting, you know. Lovely bungalow. And Tom Hopwood's a nice man. Quiet, of course, but very respectable. And good fun in his own way. We never stuck for something to talk about. But what it all boils down to is, is that enough? I mean, when it's the rest of your life you're talking about, pulling yourself up by your roots and going to live among strangers 50-odd mile away. So what are you trying to tell me, Mrs. O? You don't think it is? I suppose what I'm telling you, Kevin, is that I don't know. I really don't know what to do. And that's the honest truth. So, uh, what's going on? You tell me. 
Well, all I know is I got a message from Alec to come in early because he's got something to say to us. Well, same here. So what did you say to him this afternoon, then? Just what you said I should tell him. <laughs> Jack, I never told you to say anything. It was your idea to tackle him. So what did you say? I told him straight. I told him we weren't prepared to put up with it anymore. You never said that, did you? Well, what did he expect? You know me, Glow. When I get roused, I don't wrap now, up. If you've just gone and cost me my job, Jack Duckworth, I'll swing for you. Honest to God, I now, will. Now, Gloria, there comes a the time when you've got to stand up and be counted. Now, yes, doesn't there? Yes, but preferably not at the job centre. Oh, well, if I'd have known that was the kind of support I could have expected, I wouldn't have even bothered, would I? Well, now. What? No, Mrs. Ogden. I, I did tell you wanted a word, Alec. By gum, Jacko. What a handy little messenger you're turning out to be all of a sudden. Yes, well, no matter. I'm sure you're both more than capable of filling her in with the details once she does surface. Now then, what I want to say to you very simply is this. That when Bet here agreed to become my wife, no man got a better bargain or a better wedding present. Why, thank you, Alec. It's no more than the truth, look, no more than the truth. And now it's my turn to return the compliment. Oh? And this is my wedding present to you, my love. Your beloved Rover's return. Yours to do with as you will. Lock, stock and barrel. And yes, I know it's my name that's still over that door. But as far as I'm concerned, and perhaps more importantly, as far as our staff here are concerned, that is no more than a technicality. Because from now on, as my wife, I want you to consider yourself mistress of all you survey. I see. Now, you heard that, did you, Gloria? Of course. Good. So let's have no more whispering in corners. Right, Jack? Well, as I told you, Alec, there was never really any doubt in my mind. Oh, that's what you told him, is it? Funny, that's not what you told me, Never mind him. all that. Now, any questions? Good. All that remains for me to do is thank you for your attention and your attendance and leave you in the very capable hands of my good lady wife. All right, my love? Thank you, Alec. Not at all. Shall see you all later on. Well... Congratulations, boss. Thank you, Gloria. Well, aren't you glad? But of course I am, Gloria, love. And who wouldn't be, who'd just been made mistress of all she surveys? So why all of a sudden do I get this very funny feeling? What funny feeling? Well, like somebody who's just been taken out to dinner, only to find out not only is she going to be the one that's cooking it, but she's lined up to do the washing up as well. So you've, uh, you've something to tell me then, have you? Yes, I have. I'm sorry, Tom, but I'm afraid I won't be coming with you to Formby. Oh. Oh, oh I see. Well, well, in that case, I'm sorry too. Very sorry. Oh, it's not you. Or the bungalow. Nothing like that. No, it's me. Well... Me and round here, I suppose. Round here? Yeah. You see, almost everything important that's ever happened to me, good or bad, has happened round here. All my memories are here. And I suppose what I'm really saying is that at my time of life, I'm, I'm just not ready to leave them all behind. That's all. And you're really sure, are you? I mean, you wouldn't like a bit more time to think it over? No, I'm quite sure, Tom. My mind's made up. Oh, well, if you're sure. Well, I suppose that's that then, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it is. Uh, mind you, I, I hope we can still be friends, you know. Oh, I, but, you see, I, I'm not going to be around here much longer, am I? Why? Well, as I told you before, I've put money on bungalow, and it's standing there empty, and, you know, once paperwork's out of the way, well, there's now to stop me moving in there. You're still definitely going, then, even on your own? Oh, I... Definitely. And perhaps sooner better now. Yeah, well, I, I'll see you again, though, won't I? I mean, before you do move, like. Happen not, Hilda. You see, there's one thing I've always advocated. Clean breaks. You know, I, I never was one for going down to railway stations and seeing folk off. So I'll... I'll be going, then. Yes, right. Hi then, Hilda. Take care of yourself. Yes, you and all, Tom. Ta da, then.
so Stanley. Like the man said, that's that then. Hey, Chuck. Right, Jack, it's a wonder you haven't taken rule. Entitled to my breakfast in peace, Anna. Well, just make sure you clear this lot away after you. I don't want to be coming home to your mess. Oh, just look at the state of this place, honest. That's so with it. Well, I wouldn't expect you to notice it, would I? Eh? The same pigs are happiest in their own muck. But just look at the state of it. Oh, God, it had a lick of paint since Adam were a lad. And I'm sure the British Museum would be interested in that wallpaper. Yeah, it's homely. Homely? It's a flipping disgrace. How do you think I feel bringing my mates home to a dump like this? It's time we thought about decorating. Yeah, think about it. Then. You what? You've thought about it all your life, you. It's time you did something about it. Look, as soon as you clear this lot away, you want to get down at that precinct and get some wallpaper sample books. We can't start now, not with Christmas being so near. It's three months to Christmas. No, I think I get to do all this lot. Right. Well, the sooner you get started, then the better. I'll see you. There you go. And don't eat half of them on the way home, neither. Go on, off you go. <laughs> Ta-da. I still don't know what she's thinking about, you know. Chance of a new life in Farnby. Oh, she would have had it made. Yeah, well, I dare say it's Hilda's business, really, isn't it? You know, if she hadn't married Tom and she's stopping around here, well, she'll have her reasons. Well, I know her house has memories for her, and, well, I know she felt nobody could take the place of Stan, but... Well, you can't go on living in the past forever, can you? I just don't understand it. No, perhaps you don't, not yet. Get a few years behind you, then you might. Good morning, slave. Morning. Well, it's nice to hear somebody who's got something to be cheerful about. Dead right, Al. It's married life, isn't it, Bet? You can't be. No, I'm not complaining. Love beef burgers. It's same to you and all. No, the sort that Alec likes. She oh. said you'd be going some more in. In the freezer. Oh, thanks a lot. What else do I want? Uh, you can have some slings, peaches, or a tin of salmon. Yeah, which one? Oh, I'm actually three or four because it's just three or four. Morning. Morning. Uh, it's just my love. Please. Oh, can you help uh, yourself? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is it right that Mrs. Hopkins not going to phone me then? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the less said about that, the better, especially in present company. Well, she's not regretting it, is she? No, no, she's not. Oh, it's just that if I bump into... Well, I should say when I bump into her, because I'm bound to sooner or later. Well, I, I just don't want to be saying the wrong thing. Well, if you ask me, it's her who said the wrong thing when she sent Uncle Tom packing. But, well, it's all water under the bridge now. Oh, I, d I don't think I could take another wedding. <laughs> I mean, I haven't really got used to the idea of Alec and Bert yet. I mean, well, I, mean, I can't decide what, why they decided to get married anyway. I mean... Nothing's altered, is it? I mean, Alec's still Alec, and Bet's still Bet, and I can't see married life changing either of them. No, well, they seem happy enough to be anyway. Oh, yes, yes, I'm not saying. It's just that... Was there anything else you wanted, uh, yeah. maybe? Uh, no, no, thank you, no. No, that's all for the moment, thank you. But, I mean, well, they're not exactly uh, your ideal married couple, are they? I mean... Well, I know Beth's got a heart of gold, but, uh, well, you can't imagine her as the dutiful housewife, can you? I mean, not in a thousand years. No, well, I think that's Beth's business, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, I'm just saying, and I suppose if Alex's happy with the situation... Which but... I'm sure he is. Oh, Beth. <laughs> I, I was just saying... Yes, I know what you were just saying, <laughs> Mavis. You're not the only one either, but as it happens, you couldn't be more wrong. You see, me and Alec got married because I wanted him as a husband and he wanted me as a wife, <laughs> which is exactly what I intend to be to him. Uh, just that lot, Alf, and put the beef burgers back. I thought you wanted the beef burgers specially. Yes, I know, love, only I got to thinking, didn't I? That's not really the kind of stuff that a dutiful housewife ought to be feeding her husband, is it? Well, not too often, anyway. Uh, Deliver it, please, <sighs> Will you put me here? Uh... Ah, oh, right. I think that's everything. Oh, come on, Lord. We're late. 
don't want to go to school. No, I'm not going through all that again. I've got tummy ache. No, you said it had gone. It had, but it's come back again. I can't I stay here. I won't be missed too much, honest. Like maths, for instance. I could borrow Debbie Dalton's book. Oh, no, you don't, young lady. Now, come on. I've got an important meeting in half an hour. Mum. Come on. Two minutes. Have you got our towels for washer? Washer? The big white box in the back. You bung all your clothes in, switch it on and they come out all knotted together. Uh, no, no, mm. I... Hey, hang on a minute. You're not putting that shirt in wash, are you? Well, I'm not. Carting it down to the river bank and sloshing it between two stones, look. Well, no, it goes to laundry, doesn't it? All my best shirts do. Not anymore, they don't. You didn't just marry a pretty face, you know. Okay. Bet. Bet. <sighs> I'd uh, best make a start on them balm cakes. Hey, hang on, hang on a minute, look. You don't know what's got into bed, do you? I'm not with you. She's run me ragged this morning. Getting me a proper breakfast, sorting the washing out, changing the bed, getting everywhere straight. It's not like her. Well, she's a married woman now, isn't she? Oh, I know she is, but what's she trying to prove? She's enough to prove anything to me. Perhaps it's not you she's trying to prove it to. Hi. 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 Have you got a small wholemeal loaf left? Can you help yourself, love? Oh, you've saved my life. I mean, if we got her out of bread, I might want to eat anything else at the moment. Uh, Might as well take two, put one in the freezer. Yeah. Mr. Bowles been waiting for his um, beans on toast, is he? No, he's propping up the bar at the Rovers. I'm joining him as soon as I've had a word with Deirdre. Oh, you'll be lucky. Eh? Hey? Seems she's added to catching a grease spirit these days. She's certainly not let the grass grow since she got elected to that council. Yeah, well, she certainly seems to spend more time on council business than Mr. Roberts did. Yeah. Hey, just hang on a minute. If you're insinuating that I didn't do my duty. No, I'm not. I'm because just saying. I'm telling you, the more you do for four crown here, the more they expect you to do. As Deirdre will find out before she's much older. Yeah, well, the sooner I catch up with her, the better then. Before she takes to sleeping at the town hall as well. Well, I think it's great the way she's chucking herself into it. I don't think we could have a better councillor. Right, I'll pour them out for you and bring them over, look. Right, love. Right, love. Right, so you fix for tonight then? Yeah. Bingo. What are you spoken for? <laughs> How do you mean spoken for? Well, you don't have to check it out with Desperate Don first. Vera, Don is just a good friend, all right. He's somebody I can have a nice quiet drink with whenever I feel like it. Without any strings, OK? All right, so we're only asking. So it's OK for Bingo tonight? Yeah, why not? Well, not unless you've got a better idea. Like what? Like ringing Don up, ask him if he's got a mate, make a foursome up like. Well, that's working, isn't it? Bingo, Vera. <coughs> it was just a thought. All right. Right, yeah, girls. Yeah, that's right, Jack. Right, mother. Hey, uh, did you get down to that cruise thing about them samples? No, I didn't have time, did I? Samples? Oh. Wallpaper. We do it in the living room, kid. Well, when Picasso here gets round to doing it. <laughs> well, she hasn't worn your ear all up going on about it. She did not be going about a flipping fur coat all morning. What fur coat? Oh, it's just something that one of the girls is selling, you know. She had bought it once, you know, it's a right bargain. Thought I'd treat the sound. <laughs> well, did your pills come up then? A real fur mop head. You know, it's one of them fun furs, you know, them imitations. Anyway, I thought it'd give me a lift. What's he doing round here? Who? McKillister. It's not his usual stamping ground, is it? Oh, I just popped in for a bit of a drink and a chat. I mean, he's an old mate of mine, isn't he? Oh, I can see he's that broken. You've had to leave him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gloria. <laughs> yes, that looks there are other customers want serving, you know. Right, back in a minute. <laughs> Look, if you've got to dash I'm no, just wondering how much longer to give Susan. I thought she'd gone to Deirdre. That's right, then she was coming here, but did you know what it's like? These women, when they get nattering, present company excluded. <laughs> that is the little woman you're referring to, I take it. Yeah, that's right, talking of which. What have you done with Beth? Hey, it's not what I've done with her, it's what she's done with herself. Got bitten by the housework book, hasn't she? Well, you don't want to keep a chant the kitchen sink, you know. Not the same in here without her, is it? You don't have to tell me that. Hey, if you're put out, because I'm chatting to your bird. Well, she's not my bird. <laughs> not for the one to try in her way, Jacko. Too loud, because that's the wife's that's over there. Oh, now some things don't improve with age. <laughs> So what's bothering you then? You got a face to turn beer sour. She's only got it into her head. She wants the flaming living room decorated. What's wrong with that? I'm the one who's going to have to do it. That's what's wrong with that. Ah well, if anyone can take the pain out of decorating, I can. You know that, eh? Paint, paper, you name it, and to you, mate, 
Less than cost. Look, I don't want paint. I don't want paper. I don't want to decorate the flaming room, but I've not got much choice, have I? You really don't understand the fair sex at all, do you, Jack? Oh, yes. Say that again, Mick. Oh, see, when they start talking about tarting the place up this time of year, they don't necessarily mean they want it decorating. You won't have to tell our fear of that. They're looking forward to the long winter evenings. Yeah, and they want the little love nest to be all cosy, warm, homely, inviting. And that's where I can do an old mate a real good favour. <laughs> Courtesy of a little vine that's about to come my way. What kind of fire you got, Jacko? Fire? Yeah, you know, F-I-R-E. Two bar Alexi. Well, one bar, really. The other one packed in last winter. Well, that's your problem. <laughs> eh? You got no focal point to your room. And without that, mate, you no hope of keeping the missus happy. <laughs> well, not at your age, any road. <laughs> Hey, what you want, mate, is the very latest thing in home eating, eh? And make you and the missus envy neighbours in bargain. No, she wants it decorated. Decorating? Thought won't even enter her head. No, when you get one of these living flame gas fires rigged up, relax in the warmth and comfort as you bask in its amber glow. Gas fire? Well, not just a gas fire. Thing of beauty, Jacko, joy forever. And as luck would have it, uh, just about to get my hands on this recently cancelled export order. <laughs> In fact, it's so recent, the exporter doesn't know it's been cancelled yet. <laughs> I was beginning to give up on you. I thought you must have both gone out to lunch. No, no, nothing like that. Dad was expecting me home. I don't know where she could have got to. Oh, she must have got held up somewhere. Yeah, well, that's something I'm getting used to these days. Uh, hang on a bit, if you like. Yeah, I've got a minute or two. Oh, excuse me. Hello, Weatherfield 0827. Uh, Mr Barlow speaking. Oh, hello. Tracy is. Well, how long has she been like that? Let's see. Yes, yes, of course, I'll come straight away. And thanks for ringing. Bye. Oh, sorry, love, I'm going to have to nip out and pick up Tracy. She's not so good. That was her school. Oh, what's wrong with her? Uh, some sort of tummy trouble. I've been trying to get hold of Deirdre for some time. Well, why didn't they phone you at the office? Oh, was that, wasn't I? Would you like me to come with you? No, 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 it's all right, thanks. Uh, thanks all the same. Look, if you've got ten minutes, you could hang on here to let Deirdre know what's happened. If she decides to put in an appearance. Here. Suppose Bet's still up to her eyeballs in iron, eh? Ah, well, now things are quieting down, do as a favour. Slip us one of them pies on a plate. I'll be at the usual table. Then. Fancy anything with it? Hey, 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 beer, beer, a loop, loop. Wow. They loop like a real fire, but they're not. They weren't on gas. All the coziness of a real living fire with none of the mess. Look, a treat in our room when it is somewhere to bring your mates and all. Nobody down our street got one of them. <laughs> I don't know what you reckon. I reckon if we don't get back to work, bowling we'll a white floor with you. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. You take that with your love. Oh, can I? Yeah, yeah. I'm coming. Yeah, up, I told you, leave it to your Uncle Mickey. What are you on about? She hasn't bit yet. Oh, she will. When she starts chatting to her maid, she'll talk herself into it. But, Luke, if you want to make dead sure, I've got glossy brochure in car, you know, with them all in situ like. You get to work with her on that when she gets home, and you won't be able to get your order in fast enough. Hey, you're a... Make your house look like Tatton Hall. You're a pal, Mickey. Well, you can't do an old mate a favour. <laughs> we did say 100 quid, didn't we? Yes, I think we did mention it, yes. Gloria, what are you doing with them pies, making them? Sorry, Alec, no pies for you today. <laughs> hey? Message from there. Dinner's ready in the back. She's done your salad. What? Salad? Well, come on, don't keep her waiting. After all the trouble she's gone to for you. How are you feeling now? Still the same. Still got the pain? Where's Mum? Sorry, love, I've got no idea. All right, love, all right. The doctor's on his way. That could be him now. Oh, hello. I was expecting the doctor. Has he not been yet? Not yet. How is she? About the same. Did we not back? No sign of her. I mean, I thought she might have telephoned. How's the wounded soldier then? I feel awful. I'm not kidding, honest. Nobody said you were, lad. Mum thought I was this morning when I told her. She just thought I was saying it so I could stay off school. Hey, take it easy, all right. 
Just a moment. Yes, yeah. Doctor. Come yeah. straight. So this is the patient then. Right then, young lady. Let's have a look at you, shall we? Right. I'll just take these things off my order, oh. and I'll get Ken to pick the rest up later on. Right. Then. Did Susan catch up with you? Susan? Yes, she was looking for you before dinner. Oh, no, she didn't. To tell you the truth, I haven't been back home yet. It must have been some meeting. Well, it turned out to be a bit more than a meeting, Alf. It's someone that's grown and grown like flipping topsy. Oh, what else? It's a woman and her three kids, threatened with losing her home. Oh, how? Well, she's got that far behind with the building society payments. Well, what's it got to do with you, though? Nobody else to turn to. Her husband's walked out on her. No, I mean, how did you get involved in that in the first place? Um, ask him, he'll tell you. Yeah, well, the more you do for folk around here, love, the more they'll expect of you. Yeah, the woman's desperate, Al. She needs help. Oh, well, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you, love. <laughs> oh, so it isn't you, then? Eh? Hey? Polly. Only when I saw the doctor going in. Going in what? Your house just now. Oh, heck. Um, I'll see you later, Al. Yeah. Didn't mean to alarm her. Hey, you couldn't be thinking, could it? What was Kenny once at the door? Must be Tracy. Probably caught some bug at school. I mean, there is something going around. I think he got sent home with it in the last week. Well, Audrey never set out. It's because Gail never told her. It was only a 24-hour thing. You know what Audrey is. Anyway, he's all right now. Good. Let's hope Tracy is, eh? Uh, thank you. Y yes, I I'll hang on. What's going on? It's Tracy. Tracy? I'm going to hospital. Hospital? It seems she got appendicitis. Oh, no. I told you I had tummy ache. Oh, love, I'm sorry. I really am. I had no idea it was anything like this. The school had been trying to get you for some time. I couldn't help it, Ken. Right, the ambulance is on its way. We'll soon have you sorted out, young lady. I hope so. Where's she going? A Weatherfield General, and not a minute too soon. <clears throat> Jack, are you in? Caught him in. Close your eyes. Eh? Just do as I say. Have it closed. Yes. Ta-da! What do you reckon, then? Hey, and if you say I look like an overdressed yogi bear, I'll, I'll clob you, so help me. I wasn't going to. I think it looks very nice, as a matter of fact. And if it makes you feel good, love, it's worth every penny you pay for it. <laughs> I don't believe I'm hearing this. Oh, well, you are. I mean, you work hard enough for these little pleasures, so why shouldn't you have them? This is why I reckon we owe it to ourselves to get ourselves one of these little gas fires, you see. Oh, so that's it. Mind, there's bound to be folk round here that'll reckon we're getting ideas above our station, but I think if we want to brighten up our little home, we have every right to do so. I quite agree. So if you were thinking... Eh? I said I quite agree. Look what we spend our brass on. It's our business. If folk round here wants to turn green with envy, well, that's their problem. <laughs> Do you know it'll transform this room, Vera? It really will. It'll make it into a little palace. It'll give us a focal point, you see. Somewhere where we can relax in warmth and comfort as we bask in its amber glow. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, well, ours won't be quite like that. No, not that. The paper, the ice and stuff. It won't be having paper. We'll, we'll know for a bit. We've got to get the fire in first, and, and then we can think about the rest of the decor at our leisure. That's the idea, you see. <laughs> what a proper little fire like that. Well, it needs setting off proper, doesn't it? And I reckon that paper's just the job. <laughs> hey, this could even mean a new carpet. Do you know you're dead right, Jack? By the time we've finished, it's going to look a right little palace. A proper little palace. <laughs> She's fine. It's all over, and it's just a question of time now. Oh, I've been worried about her all afternoon. Oh, you can imagine how I've been feeling. Yes, well, I won't hold you up now, but... Do give her my love, won't you? I will. And if there's anything I can do... I know. Thanks very much, love. Bye-bye. Bye. It was Emily. Come to see how Tracy is. Oh, a sight better than she would have been if she hadn't gone into hospital when she did. Didn't you realise how ill she was this morning? Of course I didn't. Do you think I'd have let her go to school if I had? And if I hadn't been here at last time... Oh, right, Ken, I got held up. Look, I'm trying to stop a woman and her three kids from being thrown out on the street. A woman who's at her wit's end, who doesn't know which way to turn and doesn't seem to have a soul in the world to turn to. So... Perhaps now you'll understand why I wasn't back when I said I would be. 
Worth a good job I was, isn't it? So, put loose and fancy free then, are we? <laughs> well, for a couple of hours, yeah. Oh, did you mind having the kids at short notice? Hey, no problem will be getting them back again. Oh, it's the way off to them, Paris, Rome. Oh, Nearly uh, a little place near Woodford, boy. Hello. Oh, hello, babies. Can you have a grapefruit juice? Yes. Yeah. My heart's a relief. Young Tracy, she's had her operation, isn't she? Operation? Yeah, she was taken to hospital this afternoon with appendicitis. Yeah, that's right. We saw the ambulance come down, you know, we wondered what was going on. But anyway, I'm very glad she's all right. Yeah, so am I. We've got all that to come, I suppose. Oh, Brian, don't say that. Well, the Atman's done it. I mean, tonsils, appendicitis. I mean, I had the luck out by the time I was 12. Certainly oh. knows how to cheer you up, doesn't he? Laurie, I'm just, uh, I'm just nipping into the bank to get myself ready. I'm due at the Legion Club in half an hour. A couple of acts I promised to see. Britain's answer to Madonna and a yodelling gas fitter from Crumsall. Now, there's no you can't handle till Beck comes through, is there? No, of course there isn't. Uh, she is coming through, is she? Oh, yeah, of course. Why shouldn't she be? Oh, no reason. It's just she's normally through by now, you know. Oh, well, you know, Beck. She'll be putting the finishing touches to her finery. She's always one for the grand entrance. I'll give her a nudge, tell her her presence is required. <laughs> I don't know how you fix love, but Gloria's champing at the bit out there, but... What's all this a day, love? Dinner. Dinner? Yes, you know. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. This is dinner. So get your jacket off. It'll be on the table in a couple of shares. Hey, I haven't time for no dinner. I'm on my way out. I'm due at the Legion at half seven. You are going nowhere until you've got a decent meal inside of you. Well, I'll pick some up on the way out, like I've always done. You've not always had a wife to look after you before, now, have you? You winding me up, aren't you? Winding you up? Uh, it's something I've said, isn't it? All this housework, cooking and ironing and that. All right, well, what about whatever it is I've said? I'm sorry, OK? Pax? Hmm? Now, you just get your glad rags on. Get out in that bar and give the punter something to warm their hearts, eh? It's nothing you said, Alec. It isn't. Look, when you married me, I gained a husband and you gained a wife, right? Well, that's certainly the way I saw it, yeah. Right. Well, I've got no complaints about you as a husband. Oh. Oh, I'm very pleased to hear that. Because, you see, I know that you're trying as hard as you can. Yes. So it's only right that I should make the effort as well. Well, there's no need. There Beth, is every that... need. Sit down. The Legion Club, Beth. The Legion Club can wait. You are going nowhere until you've got a man-sized dollop of spaghetti bolognese inside you. Look, I was quite happy with the way things were before, honestly. But... And things are going to be even better from now on. I promise you. Do you know, if anybody had told me a month ago, I'd have taken to this housewife lark, well, I would have said they wanted certifying. Huh? But I've actually enjoyed today. You so have. shut up and stop arguing. Because this is the way things are going to be from now on. And the sooner you get used to the idea, the better. I appreciate your anxiety, Mrs. Driscoll, but... Look, quite honestly, love, I think I've done all I can. Well, look, you knew this repossession was coming. I've been to the housing department, I've contacted the social services, now the system takes over. Oh, Ken, hang on, I won't be a sec. Are you kidding? N no, no, it's not going to happen today. No. No, there'll be no bailiffs on the door today. Oh, there's no question of the children going into care. Look, you will be in a council house before the week's out, believe me. Look, Mrs Driscoll, I do have a home life of my own, you know. No, that's all right, love, don't worry. I'm I going, understand. Look, I'm going, Mrs Driscoll, I'm going to have to hang up. I'm sorry. Oh, the woman's desperate, Ken. She's got three little kids, husband's done a moonlight, court orders coming through the door like bingo coupons. That's right, a social cripple, and she's using you as a crutch. I don't get you. All compassion for the poor and unfortunate one minute. Well, they used to call it charity, and they used to say it starts at home. Oh, I see. Had to pour your own coffee, did you? Spread your own marmalade? Yes. And worry about your child. That's not fair. Oh, you will manage to get to the hospital, will you, sometime today? I mean, I know Trace is expecting you, but then, of course, with Mrs Driscoll in these dire straits. You're a moaner, Ken. Do you know that? 
Tracy doesn't moan. She understands better than you do. Yeah, well, she hasn't got much choice, has she? Look, just give me a break, will you, Ken? I didn't get into this council thing with the idea of sitting on my thumb. Look, if you want to be the next Rosie Barnes, OK, fair enough. But right now, with a child sick in hospital... Oh, God, she's had her appendix out. Look, all right, all right, maybe I have overdone things. <laughs> Please, God, don't let it be Mrs. Driscoll. Um, six pens, was it? Yeah. Six at nine p. Sorry, I've no less. Nine's fifty-four. Oh, that's right. That's one, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. oh. oh I'm sorry. Oh, oh, pardon me. Oh, dear, what with being up since before six and nothing, Miss Stomach, I just don't know what to do with myself. Oh, where's your mind at today? Oh, well, if you mean Rita, I'm just disgusted with her. I mean, look, here it is. It's gone nine and eight o'clock's her time. I mean, they were so busy in the morning, I haven't had time to put the kettle on or anything. Oh, the relief column arrived. I beg your pardon? You just very nearly landed yourself a good job. To ta Bye. Bye. <laughs> Relief column. Good oh. job. And what's all this about? Rita hasn't turned in. I'm dying for a couple. Will you just look after the shop for me for five minutes? Oh, I'm sorry, Mavis. I'm due at the factory. Oh, well then, don't let me stop you. I mean, if you're in that much of a rush, I'm surprised you had to come in at all. I wanted some aspirins, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I seem a bit testy, but honestly, it just gets you on pins. I mean, Rita wants telling. She's getting too blooming fond of these little lions. Oh, I don't think she's lying in. Do you mean she's up and about and I'm standing here famished? Well, actually, I mean, far be it from me to tell tales out of school, but um, I came out the back way and as I passed Rita's yard, their back door was open and uh, I heard voices raised. <sighs> Not in prayer, I shouldn't have thought. Oh, no. In fact, I got the definite impression that Rita and Alan were having a row. Thank you, love. Call again. Hello, Betty, love. Hello, lovely. How are you? Still retired there. No sign of a comeback. Well, not as you'd noticed it, though. Well, you know what they say, don't you? Once you've served in the bar, it's in your blood. I don't know that, uh... Confuse us. Hey, weren't you a Chinaman? Ah, <laughs> Confucius, yeah. He wrote some classics, you know. Oh, yeah. The Mark on the Wall. Or was that who flung dung like that? Oh, <laughs> I'll tell you something for now, though. He obviously knew more about laundries than he did about pub work. Mm. Well, that'll not miss it. <laughs> uh, have you seen out of bet? Well, not a lot. I pop in, you know. But yeah. I can't say as the Lord and Master puts the welcome matter. What do you think of it? Either. I'd have to see you, wouldn't you? Hi. Oh, Hello. I say, I was sorry to hear about little Tracy. How's she doing? Oh, she's fine. She's oh. recovering really well. In fact, I took Deirdre to the hospital this morning. I've only just got back. Oh, do they let the mum stay with them? Oh, I don't know. Probably. But uh, Deirdre came back with me. She's got a surgery this afternoon. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, that's a surgery. Ah, it's a lot of swank, if you ask me. It's what they call giving yourself a high profile. Oh, is it with Deirdre being on the council, then? Is it? Yeah, public relations, they call uh, it. Standing up to be shot at, more like. Mm. I never had a surgery. Pity you didn't love it. Might not have got chucked off. Well, you... Oh, give us a large scotch if you've got a minute, Ben. Anything you say, sir. Anything? Hey, I heard that. Yeah. How's business? Booming. Can I interest you in a slightly used snake? A snake? Has it got its own ladders? Oh, it's Miss Dow's stripper, isn't it? Who do you believe she's gone off snakes? Well, I will so regret it. The way that snake wound itself round her body, it were operatic. Alec. <laughs> hey, have you worked it out yet? Yeah, don't worry, I've got it all weighed up. What do you mean? But I'm not stopping. I'm going to the tripper with Ivy. Just thought I'd drop in for a progress report. Well, I mean, I can see I'm started. The house is still there. Look, everything is under control. It'll all be done by the time you get home from work. Folk think you're mad. What folk? Oh, you've been running me down, have you? Dozy Jack Duckworth can't even knock an alien. <laughs> well, I'm going to make a meeting words, all of them. I'm telling you, when you come home tonight and you find glowing coals and living flame all at the turn of a tap, well, as long as it's a gas fire that's a glow, not the flipping furniture. Well, if all you can do is knock and you're not supping, excuse me. Oh. Right, that's me ration. Better find out what's on the table. Ah, oh, Susan not working then? No, not yet. She keeps having these interviews. I say, OK, you've got the brains. I mean, you're a fabulous cook, a marvellous housewife, and you make a wonderful mother. And you know what? I think I'm getting through. I think I'm actually winning. See you. 
See you, Mike. Well, it's easy to win when you load the dice. I mean, all these interviews, how does she explain getting fired by her husband? Aye. Oh, when I was winning once, and suddenly there I was, on the floor. Yeah, but you're back on your feet again, I say, and fighting fit. You and Gail trading punches again? Yeah, the trouble is, Gail's got all the footwork nowadays. Plus, the right hook is deadly. But things are getting better, am I right? Yeah, things are a lot better. See you, love. Alec, I've got a big job on at all, so if things are a bit slack about two o'clock, do you think it'd be all right with Betty for slow off? Bet, then you could spare the incredible oak here once the rush has died down. All oh, right, what's this? Go and mark and have you, Mr. Frog, at left town again. No, it's something I'm attending to at all. Not the marital bed. There's nothing sacred, you swine. It's my living flame fire. Come on, come clean. We're not daft around here, you know. It's Dulcie Froggart again, isn't it? Oh, come on, it might not be. I mean, you could call such a lady a hot little number, but hardly a living flame fire. No, it's, it's my gas fire. It's the very latest. I mean, in gas fire technology, I suppose you could say it takes gas fires into, into space. Aye, and you with it. Oh, come on, how's about it? Because I, I need a flying star, you see. Otherwise, there's going to be no heat on it in the adults. Oh, OK, go on, I'll buy it. Yeah, you're a prince, I like. I hope you realise what you've done with him. Duck egg, fiddling around with gas fires. I mean, do you know his track record when it comes to what you might call public utilities? I hope you're joking, love. Trying to, Alec, but I do have my memories. Oh, at last! Since when did you decide to go on part-time? This is when do you do decide to show shop at quarter to one? Well, what do you expect? I've been stuck here on my own since seven o'clock. I even missed Harriet's fee. I mean, you should have seen how droopy her feathers were. You should have seen the look she gave me. Pax, my fault. There's been one or two things to sort out at home. Anyway, Lee said soon it's mended. I'm here now, so you can go back to your feed bag. Oh, feed bag. <laughs> I like that. It's nothing serious, is it? All very trivial, you'll be sorry to hear. Alan not appearing today. I doubt it. Now, what was I doing last thing yesterday? Stock. That's it, stock. In tomorrow, is it, Alan? Just a minute. Is that Harriet? Is she calling you? Harriet is a budgerator, not a parrot. And if you don't wish to confide in me, that's perfectly all right with me. Oh, we had a phone call from Jenny's school this morning. Well, there's been one or two recently, but this time it was the headmaster. You know, she's on the roll, a promising pupil, when can we expect her in class? Oh. And if that wasn't enough, we got a postcard this morning. From Jenny? Yes. She's in Bordeaux, picking grapes. Oh. And it's driving Alan mad. I mean, her O-level results were marvellous, and now she's chucking it all away. At least, that's the way Alan chooses to see it. And when he gets the bit between his teeth, there is no talking to him. Oh, well, that would be difficult, I imagine conversation with a bit between your teeth. You see, I open my heart to you and you send me up. No, seriously, though, I, I mean, I should think that Alan feels guilty. I mean, all those years he missed when Jenny was a child and, well, when he'd left her mother. Happen. Besides which, I mean, he does seem to be a bit on the impetuous side. Well, he's got hell of a temper, I can tell you that, and I'm on the brunt of it at the moment. Cabin, Rita Fairclough, please. Hello, Alan. Well, what the hell will that achieve? Look, I think we ought to discuss this. Oh, I see. I'm lucky to get a phone call, am I? Well, don't go rushing off. Hang on, I'm coming home. Oh, I'm sorry, love. That's Alan. He's in a right state. Oh. Keep pitching, kid. I'll see you as soon as I can. Oh, well, try to get back by three. Oh, Harriet'll go berserk. You've got a nice homely place here. Oh, yeah. Very comfy. We had a place like this. Well, little terrace. Till that fly be night of wed got his big ideas. Upmarket houses, upmarket women. Sod really landed me in it. You take sugar, Mrs Driscoll? Mm? Uh, no, thanks. I'm watching my figure. These ambitious men, you lose your figure, they're off. Sometimes they're off anyway. Ah, I know how you feel, love. I've been through it. My first marriage broke up. Oh, you've done all right, though. I admire women like you. On the council, throwing your weight around. Me. I were up the stick at 18. Oh, I weren't much older myself. I know I'm imposing. But when you're left with three kids, daft mortgage, not a bed or a chair you can call your own, everything on the flaming not... So even the furniture's going to be taken? Oh, I've letters, all this, this straight rubbish. I'll tell you one thing, though. 
They're not taking the kids. Look, I don't think there's any question of that. Oh, come off it. Are you in this? You've been promised a council house. Look, do I look stupid? I've had an offer of emergency accommodation. That means a hostel, so, so where does that put me kids? Look, I'll check on this, but you were promised a house or maybe a flat. Well, bureaucrats that promise you anything. If a hostel's been mentioned, it, it's probably just temporary. No, that means permanent in their language. I worked in the town hall, I typed those bloody letters. I know these bureaucrats. In any event, it, it's not certain you'd be parted from your kids. Do I look stupid? I can read. You see these cases? Going to care. Mrs. Driscoll, I, I know you're having a bad time, love, but you just try and keep a grip. You've got a child of your own. Well, you must know how I feel. Isn't your child the most important thing in your life? Look, love, this isn't really my area, you know. I'm, I'm not a social worker. I only got on the council six months ago. And, and you've done a lot for me. I, I'm grateful. You've got my vote forever. All I'm asking is... You go to the housing department and make it clear that they're not parting me from my children. They're not having my kids. Now listen, I fancy a video, something nasty, filthy and violent. I'll oh, come through and take your choice. You're not planning any more little dinner parties then? Oh, do be a favour, Cock. Night of the sex-crazed werewolf would be a rescuer compared with my efforts in that direction. Oh, I don't know. I quite enjoyed it. I mean, Alex such a raconteur, isn't he? If that's French for sex-crazed werewolf, I'm suing. Oh, it means a teller of tales. <laughs> Is all of that? Yes, I mean, you could tell it. He hadn't really got into his stride. I mean, I bet he's got a fund of stories. Oh, he has, Mavis, mostly about strippers. He did say he thought you'd a good figure. Oh. Now, he's planning auditions. You could get a call any day. <laughs> How's it going, Mavis? Still holding the fort? I bet. I I I'm sorry, love, I can't stop. I've got one or two things to sort out in town. <laughs> right! Oh, uh, fellas, I won't be long, love. I'll be back within the hour. Oh. Promise you. Well, thanks very much. Bang goes my afternoon break. What's the flat then? Oh, search me. Nothing's been right in that house since Jenny went off to France. Well, you see, that's what comes of living in sin. It was her choice, Bet. But if she didn't want to marry the man, why let him live with her? Meantime, I'm stuck here on my own again. Can't be fun. Fun? <laughs> I know you were only joking, Bet, but honestly, if Alec did want to audition... Who's joking? I mean, he finds talent everywhere. Think of it. Bubbles O'Reilly, the hotshot hoochie-coochie of Rosamond Street. There's no tear of fancy. You scrabble again tonight. Try a cup. Bye. Deirdre, you there, now? Anybody home? Hey, upstairs, hello. Oh, hello, Emily. Look, look, I'm not stopping. I just noticed you coming in. Oh, we're supposed to be visiting Tracy, but uh, Deirdre's nowhere to be found. Yes, actually, she asked me to give you a message. Oh, I see. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. We've had the two-minute warning, and she has retired with the rest of the council to their exclusive little bunker. <laughs> not exactly. It was this lady she's been helping. Seemingly, she turned up. Oh, no, not again. Well, anyway, this Mrs. Driscoll was in something of a state and Deirdre felt there were things she had to take up with the people at the housing department. I get it. Telling the professionals their job. Ken, she is new to all this. Mm, and a natural sucker for a hard luck story into the bargain. I'd better give you the message. Can't wait. She'll be at the hospital, but she'll go straight from the town hall and meet you on the ward. I've heard that one before. <laughs> I'd better get back. I've got Norman's dinner on. You know, he's quite ravenous when he gets back from college. Well, Norma's lucky, coming home for meals on the table. You know, it strikes me, Deirdre can't pass a committee room without sticking her nose in. Bye. Bye, Emily. It's all right. Don't panic. It's not the gas board. <laughs> Crikey. Oh, Jack! Why wouldn't you be so... Come and get me while my blood's hot. You! 
Jack's wallet. Don't worry. Run your wallet, I would have to. Oh, is that? Feast your eyes on the miracle of precision engineering. Does it work? Like a dream. Well, let's see it then. Well, stand back then, stand back. See, you've got to like this. And then hold it. Hold it in. Until it gets warm. Ha <laughs> ha! We've heard that before, eh? Hey, I hope you've done it right. Hey, first class and then some. The dance of the living flame, gas fire. All we need now is a toasting fork, chestnuts and a kettle on the hob. Oh, it's, it's fantastic! Mm. Ain't no spitting in it, no chucking any tab ends in it. But you've done a great job, love. Wait, we'll have you and that lot see this. They'll be green. <laughs> <laughs> You. Don't you agree, though, Ivy? I mean, you know about these things, workers' rights and that sort of thing. Don't you agree I would be justified in shutting up this shop and saying I'm not going to stand behind this counter another minute without a break, without refreshment, and with Harriet upstairs, penned in a cage, not so much as a little flutter around all day? Well, I don't know what your contract of employment says, but I reckon you're being made a mug of. <laughs> I've never even seen a contract of employment. Mind you, normally it's a doddle in here, isn't it? I mean, it's not like that Bastille. Got Baldwin cutting his cost margins. It comes down on all of us, you know. Got Vera giving me flaming ear old powder every day. Who you think you've had a basin for? Do you know all I've had today? Gas fires. Gas fires, gas fires. Now I'm expected to go around tonight and admire the flaming contraption. And if I'm not ecstatic, they'll say I'm being jealous. Hands up. I can explain everything. Is she in a good mood? You're joking. I'm off. I don't want to say a punch up. Oh, Trala. Yeah. It's all right coming in here acting daft treat. But I'm nearly out on my feet here. I haven't seen you for five minutes all day. Well, take tomorrow off. I don't want tomorrow off. I've got nothing planned for tomorrow and I just object to being treated like part of the furniture. Look, I've been arguing with Alan all day and I can't take much more. No, well, I'm sorry, but neither can I. Well, you can do what he does then. Take off. Take off? Yes, for France. Looking for Jenny. Well, you've got no address or nothing. Exactly. Just a card, postmark, Bordeaux. But that seems to be enough. We have been down at the travel agents all afternoon making arrangements, and now he's gone hairing off. I did suggest a bloodhound might be more useful, but who's going to listen to me? What a fix, and here's me blowing my top. Oh, I'll put kettle on. So, they've both done a bunk. Lord knows when they'll be back, if ever. Yes, it's, uh, it's very nice. It's a big improvement. But isn't there a slight smell with it? Ah, it's with my socks. You're not used to this heat. No, <laughs> no, no. It's not a sweaty sock smell, Jack. It's a... Well, it's a gas smell. Well, it's a gas fire, isn't it? I mean, what do you want to smell, bro? Says. <laughs> Could you be the newness of it? I only did the connections this afternoon. Hang about. Did I hear right? Have you stuck this thing in? Of course they did. And why not, eh? Have you seen how much they charge? But it's an offence, Jack. You're supposed to get a fully qualified gas fitter. There is nothing you could tell me about gas meters. Oh, I reckon an entry, I dare say. And that smell's getting stronger. Well, it's bound to be, hasn't it? No, now you know I've fixed it. <laughs> it's Alf. He's brought oh. me order. Hey, I reckon we owe you a spot on summit, kid. Take a few. Well, I wasn't planning on stopping. Right, go on, that's a grand blaze you've got there. Well, it gets chilly these nights, you know. I thought we'd stir up cold. Ah, come in, sit down, have a warm up. Yeah. Oh, heck, it's champion, is that? Must be right good cold. Uh, mind you, they're all right, these things. There's a lot of muck and mess with them, though, isn't there? Hey, up, what's going? Blow me. <laughs> it's gas, is it? <laughs> got hey. you there, Al. Hey, I put kettle on. Hey, it's very convincing, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is, yeah. Alf, yeah? can you smell gas? What do you want? Usual. Hi, Mike. A gin and tonic and a scotch. Oh, hello. Can you get your drink? No, you're all right. Mike's getting me one. Oh. So, have you been to the hospital then? Naturally, yes, naturally. I mean, I know Tracy's doing fine and she's no baby, but she's always tickled pink to see me. And, of course, over the moon, if Deirdre finds a time to turn up. Well, she went this morning. I took her. Oh, yes, yes. She makes every effort. I mean, she has to run Weatherfield nowadays. She's actually managed five minutes tonight once she's put the housing department in their place. There you go. You join us, Ken. Ah, oh, thanks all the same. I'm just stood here feeling bitter. I'd best be off. I'd best be having a late meal. It should be on the table. <sighs> Providing, of course, the council <coughs> haven't decided to call another meeting. See you. Wow. Well, so this career stuff causes trouble. Do you know, me dad and you should start a club for spoiled kids. <laughs> uh, 
anyway, he's trying to pull the cows in the career. What a shame. Oh, I didn't know you two knocked about together. Don't be daft, our knocking about days are over. We just met coming in, didn't we? <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to say, if your aunt monkey runs, there's this belting little boozer down by the docks. Every male guaranteed tattoo to the hilt. Hey, steady on. Look, less of the gas bag and we'll have a lager each. Come on. These are on me and I'll join you. Okay. I'll eat, love. I'll be nattering for the next half hour, so you're in charge. Find it safe, I'll fetch them all. Hey, Betty. What? Well, talking about gas, I've just come from Vera. Oh, yeah. Under the cost tonight, are you, my son? Yeah, oh, just doing my share. What you might call helping out in the home. It's all the fashion, I believe. Yeah, you tell him, Alec. Well, I believe in give and take. Friends of mine might call in tomorrow. Oh, you've got friends, have you? There's some very nasty rumours going around here, you know. I mean, they're Jack's installed it. And if I couldn't smell gas, well, I'd give up. Well, have they turned it off? Have the eggers like they sat there toasting the toast? Well, I've said all I'm going to say. If they haven't got sense to take notice of me and turn the blooming thing off, well, God help them. Tomorrow at 630. By the way, LA Law is here at 8 tonight. Try the quiz and win yourself a signed photograph of the cast and an LA Law number plate signed by Corbin Burnson with Plus Online at gplus.co.uk. But next tonight, Martin's cricket team is a man short. Another chance for Paul to shine in ever decreasing circles.